All right, let's do this. Let's let's get in and talk about the things and the stuff and the stuff with the things. Hello there, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be in your part of the world. Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is November 22nd, 2023. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How you doing there, chat room? I see a bunch of folks already wandering in over here, mostly on Twitch. We're also broadcasting to YouTube today. How are you out there? Hello, hello. Let's say hello to some of the folks that are here. And of course, there is a bot that'll pass messages back and forth. But first, Mythin. Tino one just resubscribed for 26 months. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. 26 months with us. And as I do with all of our subscriptions, cheers, advertising revenue, I'll make a donation to the American Cancer Society. In memory of those folks from our community that we've lost, and for those folks who are watching, if you're out there, we support you. We're, I, I was just notified, I, I have a family member that was diagnosed with a, a stage three cancer. We support you, we encourage you, and we want to, to help you get through this. Thank you so much for, for that support. All of, uh, yeah, let me, let me uh, Let's go through and, and talk to some folks here. How you doing there? Null Sheffo, lanky Scottish nerd. Good day to you. Um, afternoon to you, Robert Stefan. Hello, warm peas. Um, let me let me continue scrolling through here. My headset needs to be turned up just a smidge. Raventhorn heading to Florida on Friday. Ready and waiting for me for Dev Intersection. Yes. Dev Intersection conference is coming up in about 10 days now. Um Orlando, Florida. I'll be I'll be speaking at the Walt Disney World Swan, um, their hotel and conference center. We'll be talking about .NET Maui. I'm giving a workshop with our friend Maddie Montequilla. And if you've seen Maddie and I present before, the chaos is strong with this one. It's it's going to be a blast. Um, I'm giving a Blazor workshop. We're going to talk about .NET eight. We're going to talk about all the cool new things you can do with Blazor. We're going to be giving uh, sessions about Blazor with .NET 8, and I've got a hybrid session, uh, Maui hybrid session we'll be delivering with Maddie as well. Uh, Misak Fisak, hello to you. Uh, Tarek, uh, I'm sorry, Tarka Code over on YouTube. Hello, good to see you. Hello, hello. Greenish Pepper, good morning. Uh, Maddie's your buddy. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, James will not be there. Nope. Uh, no Montemagno this time. So we're uh, we're we're gonna have a good time. We've got a bunch of folks from Microsoft there. Scott Hunter, Scott Hanselman. There's a quota of Scots you must have at a Dev Intersection conference, and of course Scott Guthrie. Uh, no, he is not at this. Scott! One. Yes, him, that guy. Um, uh, I'll be there. Um, I mentioned Maddie Montequillo will be there. Leslie Richardson, she's the uh, program manager in charge of C-Sharp Dev Kit. She works a lot on the .NET debugger. Um, continuing around her, Syed Hashimi, who is responsible for a lot of the integration tools that you have with ASP.NET with Visual Studio. He'll be there as part of the event. Um, continue, oh, uh, Kathleen Dollard from the Languages Development Teams in charge of uh, F, uh, F sharp development, visual basic development, um, and part of the C sharp language design team. She'll be there. And, uh, of course our friend fierce kittens will be there as well. So you get a chance to meet fierce kittens as part of that. Alou the crow. Hello. Hello. Um, welcome in AI and copilot will be a set of keywords for shots. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we're going to quite go there. But uh, we'll absolutely have a good time. There's a thing blinking at me here on the on the Twitch dashboard. I, what, am I supposed to put this into shield mode or something? No, I'm not doing that. No, why are you blinking at me? Go away. How you doing there? Tick, tick, boom. Hello, hello. A couple members of the uh, live coders team. Welcome. Uh, that was 49. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let me get some music playing here in the background, and we'll talk about what we want to go through today. I've really been enjoying the Stream Beats Synthwave playlist. Um, this sounds good. This is called Hadron Collider. 
We'll start here. There it is right there. This is music that's DMCA free, royalty free. Use it wherever you'd like. Check it out at streambeats.com. Big thanks to Harris Heller and his team of creators for putting this music together that we're listening to today. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Really? Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. That's not the right ad. That's not the right ad. 85% certainty. No. We learned when, when I was in Bulgaria at the DevReach conference, there's a bunch of things that we can do with Semantic Kernel that should make the hat bot, hat detection bot, a lot more compelling, interesting to work with. Um, I think we're going to look at that to upgrade and replace. Um, replace what we have for, it, it move there from uh, custom vision AI and see what we can do there. About to start the workday, says Alu the Crow, and then sign an offer letter. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Best of luck to you. That sounds, that sounds like a winner to me. Good luck to you, Alu. Um, so, previously, on um, Monday, we talked about all the great successes that we had as part of .NET Conf, showing off TagZap, the, the great work that folks on, on this stream, in this community, have contributed to. Thank you again, everybody, for your help with that, whether it's just chiming in on as we're writing code um hey ridge raider hello um it, or or helping out with a pull request filing an issue we we had a great time with that now i want to make sure that you know if you watched the end of day three when when i closed out dotnet conf not only did i put a big thank you out there for the folks that have contributed to tag zap I also went to the source code and scrolled through the list of contributors. I wanted to make sure that everybody saw that we had a great team that helped out with that. And I also want to let you know, we sent the, the post event report out to all the folks at Microsoft in developer division in, in Azure um, and let them know what a great event we had. But also in that, we included links over to Tags app and we thanked all the contributors for helping out so while your name might not have been directly put in front of some of the heavy hitters at microsoft there's a link to your work so that folks may see and find out more about that um hell constantine hello hello it's going well it's the day before the american thanksgiving holiday and i'm taking a day to just relax have a good time Writing code with, with some friends here on Twitch. I enjoy that. It's fun. We're, we're doing something that's productive. It's, it's, it, it's right, it's that, that feel good, um, that, that vibe, that, that, that kick, that we're solving puzzles and we're doing something that's interesting along the way. C-Sharp Titan on YouTube. Hello, hello. The UI refresh in Visual Studio 17.9 Preview 1 looks awesome. Fresh and clean. Congrats to me and the team. Uh, I I didn't know anything about the UI refresh until I saw the post from Mads. Um, and quite frankly, I haven't worked with Visual Studio and the update yet. So when I open it here on stream will be the first time that I get to see it as well. Chief Proby, hello, hello. Have I ever used JMeter? to create Azure load tests for a Blazor app. I have not. I'm not familiar with JMeter, so I can't say that I have. Um, no, it, it, tell me more about that. Is what should I what should I know about JMeter? Is that something that would be uh, that would be fun to use to check out for some of the for Tags app like we're building here. Um, always interested in in exploring learning new tools as we build a product together not just write software together, right? I hope I hope that's something that, that our longtime viewers out here kind of grasp and hang on to here. I don't just write a little bit of code for something and kind of throw it away here. We're, I build something that you can reach out and touch and check out all, all the source code and contribute to, download, reuse bits and pieces in your own software because I open source all this stuff. I hope 
you see and recognize and feel good about that. So, th thank you, Hell Constantine. I appreciate the kind words. Um, .NET Aspire is awesome. And as we get into December, we're going to aspire a fi I've coined that. I think that's that's my word. I'm I'm telling the .NET folks that that's that's my thing. We're going to aspireify tag zap and see how that goes. Tick tick boom. Had a quick look at .NET Aspire. It's like a more cloud integrated or lean style system. No, you're right. It, it .NET Aspire is a way for you to package and deliver an application, a distributed system as one workload for you to develop and work locally as one organized orchestrated package so that you get debugging logging stats management all locally and be able to explore and manage and work through that that's a huge huge benefit to you as a developer and then being able to deploy all of that as a unit that's pretty cool now this is an early preview, right? We know that building and managing distributed applications typically involves many, many teams. So there's things they're doing now to get past, okay, you just have two or three components, you're bringing in two or three pieces here to make that distributed application. The team is absolutely recognized, we need to be able to integrate and pull in more pieces that aren't just .NET, but be able to orchestrate and manage with .NET and, and turn into that Aspire managed application coming. All things that are coming, the source code, the issue list is all visible on the github.com slash .net slash Aspire repository. You can watch exactly what the team is doing, the pull requests from the community that they're getting. It's really good stuff. So, um, Hell Constantine's going through a profession conversion studying for QA tester. You like the dev part more? Hey, that's cool. That That's very cool. I know a bunch of folks that have gone through that process. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to explore, right? And I think that's something that QA testers, I think, have a lot of experience doing. Testing, exploring, getting curious about things, right? Don't be judgmental. Be curious. Uh, football coach once said that. Um, let me see here. Uh, massive productivity upgrades. I agree, tick, tick, boom. I agree. And as developers, something that, that Amanda Silver said. So Amanda Silver, vice president of Microsoft, uh, in Microsoft developer division. I forget her exact title. Sorry, Amanda. Um, vice president, I forget. But she's, she's basically... Like, my third boss up. I used to work directly for her, but they, they decided to put people between me and her. After after I talked to her a little bit, they're like, I, I don't want to deal with this Fritz guy. You manage him. <laughs> Anyways, um, so um, um, Amanda said something that was very compelling when she was talking to Paul Therott, and that was that when developers are working on software, and I think we all kind of recognize this, but it's hard for us to put this into words. When we're working on software, there's a mental model of the application that we're, we're managing, we're juggling in our minds. And as we move in and start working with that model and changing things and, and syncing and committing that model that we're working on to disk through code, right? We write code and it gets synced to, di to disk so other folks can work with it. There's a lot of juggling that's going on in there. And when you get interrupted, it's very hard to get back into that. And I, and I take what she explains there and what she describes, and I extend that a little bit when we think about distributed systems. You only know up to that point in the API where some other system is communicating with. You don't really know some of that stuff. You might have an idea what's going on in that other system. But when we think about our distributed applications, you, for the purposes of managing the model of your piece of the application that you're working with, you really only care about up to those APIs. Because... It's just too much mental load to manage exactly what's going in and all the other little developers, pieces developers, around it. Developers, 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 um, is that uh, Lubo? Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. So, uh, Chief Proby says J Meter is an Apache tool for creating test scripts that simulate users using developers, the app. You can scale those tests up and down as needed. Nice. 
and it's used for uh, Azure load testing. Very cool. Um, definitely something we can look at for testing TagZap as we look at and, and consider what's it like to have a fully online hosted version of the service at some point. Feels like something to to put into put into our test kit here. Um, can you do me a favor, Chief Proby? Can you put a, a here? I, I haven't even shared the link yet. Uh, can you create an issue on the Tags app repository here? Um, so I'm going to put here for. I need to create today's project command. Um, we're going to be adding. Um, user blocking to tags app source at there we go there's the project command and i'm going to pin that message to the top of twitch if you're watching on youtube there's a link to tags app in the description just below but can you do me a favor there chief chief proby let's open an issue about load testing and if you could provide a link to jmeter so we can learn more when it comes time for us to build that part. We're not going to be able to get to that kind of thing today. But at some point in the future, let's consider that and and put it out there as something to do. And maybe somebody, maybe one of you out there is interested in writing some test scripts for it that we can review and learn about here on stream. Continuing here on YouTube, C Sharp Titan says, uh, how much of the features in Visual Studio Enterprise do I use? Do I think I could use Community Edition for everything I do on a daily basis? I purposely don't use the enterprise features on on stream and and realistically I I was using community edition for a long time on stream um, because I want to show folks look at everything that you can do with a free license to Visual Studio and if you if you meet that licensing requirement where you need to buy the pro version you're still in and all the things that i am doing you can do um i don't uh, realistically i don't use the the enterprise features that much um if if i was spending more of my day writing and managing the code for these applications i probably would but I'm not, so I don't. So, hey, Tobo Nautilus uh, on Twitch. Uh, great to see you. Um, if, if if you could send me a wish for covering a topic. Okay, here we go. C-sharp ASP.NET and a Raspberry Pi to control the LED lights of a Christmas tree. That's not bad. What do you have in mind as far as the lights interaction? Um, might be something. Mm. C sharp Josh with the resub. C Josh just resubscribed for forty nine months. Forty nine. Forty nine months with us. Thank you so much, and I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Um, there might be. Are there Christmas lights that are controlled by USB? Hmm. Otherwise, ah, USB powered Christmas lights. Hmm. One second here before I put my Amazon UI up on screen. Because that that never that that's never been a problem before. Um, hmm. So USB powered Christmas lights. Oh my! The question is, can we control them from that? Not just power on, power off. But can we send commands across the USB? This is, and I, I just picked the, picked the first one. 
Uh, Breeze Labs Christmas lights. Right? Is there an SDK or something here that that we could latch on to and do something? Support. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. But if I don't have any support from you, I can't do anything with your damn Christmas lights. Let's try again. Um, next. Renoliss. These are all sponsored and they look cheap and cheesy. Dazzle Bright Color. What do we have here? Dazzle Bright. Bright SDK. Nah, that's not it. No. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You're selling me these things, but how do I work with them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No. Next. Like, the cheap and, and, and lame thing to do would be to put these on a, um... On just a power thing that we can control and turn them on and off. And that feels lame. I want to do more. So USB Christmas lights SDK. Mm-hmm. 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 Gotta be a way to do this. No. Gonna have to come back to that. Uh, hey, Billy Cool. Hello, Con uh, Hell Constantine. Got good vibes. Oh, thank you. Um, continuing through. English Heart. Ah. Uh, uh, Lubo is a front-end developer with React, living in Portugal, really interested to invest in North America jobs. Do I think learning C-sharp to become a full stack is a good choice? Yes, I do. There, there's a lot of folks that use C-sharp on, on back-end service development, React on front-end service development. Yes, I think it's a very good mix. Dr. Cox, yes, streaming on a Wednesday, why not? It, Big Daddy McCoy, it does feel like a, a, a fun project for the holiday. You're right. I think we need to do more research on what would be a good set of lights to hook up to, hook up to a Raspberry Pi. Right? Like, even if they have their own base and their own API that they plug into that we use Bluetooth or something to communicate with, I'd be on board with that. But we need to find a device to connect to and um, I know our friends at the Raspberry Pi Foundation would enjoy watching us put something fun together like that. Tick Tick Boom asks, with Microsoft for the for startups program, we get something like 50 enterprise licenses, but I haven't noticed any massive differences for day-to-day -day -day dev tools. I, I hear you. I hear you. It's when you get into the performance testing, the, the unit testing and, and advanced unit testing features that you'll see improvements on enterprise stuff. Uh, there are some libraries to control uh, WS2812 addressable LEDs on the Raspberry Pi. Yes? But how do we get the addressable LEDs in, right in, in Christmas light format? Simple APA102 LEDs. They're cheap, very simple to dress using just two GPIO pins. You wrote a Windows 10 IoT core app a few years ago. Nice. Nice. That was your project. Let's see what Tobo Nautilus has for us here. 
Um, homebear.blinked. Nice. <laughs> um, oh, that's very cool. Having a little console with being able to turn on and off and the colors of the lights. That's kind of cool. And our friend Carrie writing back. Neat. Um, and uh, a <laughs> little bit of MVC. All right. Uh, MVVM because it's okay. Very cool. I'll have to take a look back at that more later. I'll open that over here on this one. Um, let me see here. Philips Hue has some Christmas lights with the Hue API. Really? Didn't spell it right, but hey. Um, smart Christmas lights. Um, eh, fine, whatever, go away. Um, you'll be back again in 2023. I don't, I don't know if you know this, Phillips. It's 2023. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so how do I work with this? Yeah. Apps and software, don't mind if I do. How do I play an effect? How do I... <laughs> Give me an SDK. I would like an SDK from you, Philips. And then I can buy your smart light bulbs and do something impressive with them. Like blink at my daughter when she comes home from college. What the heck? Um, come on now. Philips Hue SDK. New Hue API. Mm. Early access to new version two of the Hue API. Yeah. V2 exists next to the V1 API and this, that, and the other. Getting started in core concepts. Log into your Hue developer account because we're not going to show you a thing until we know who is dealing with our light bulbs. Do we know anybody at, at Philips? I'm going to keep this bookmarked and come back to it. There's definitely something there that we could do and have a lot of fun with on stream. Without doubt. Um, right, the more that I can hand off to a fully... Um, to, a, to a fully developed product and don't have to cobble something together. If there's an API we can connect to and we could set up a Raspberry Pi in the kitchen or somewhere with a nice screen, and I've already got a device set up with that. Deploy a container that knows how to connect to it, I think we'd, we'd slay. Yeah, if it's network-based, that, that works for me. So, yeah. Um, Hell Constantine asks, any advice on what to use to build an app GUI? I have no idea what I'm doing, but I want, uh, but I don't want a shortcut like Pi Simple GUI. Um, take a look. So you're building a graphical user interface, Hell Constantine, for what type of what what type of interaction? Are you building a website? Are you building a native app? Give me a little bit of constraints there on what you're looking for. We're gonna be building with ASP.NET here, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and what we call razor templates. You'll see more about that in a little bit. C Sharp Titan on YouTube says, when creating a Blazor hybrid app, should I always specify render mode of auto or... I'm not sure yet. 
I'm I'm tinkering with and and getting my arms around uh, Blazer Hybrid with .NET 8. Let me get back to you on that. Um, uh, there isn't much of an SDK, but there are API docs somewhere, right? If we can get into the API docs and it's a network thing, I can do network things from .NET. There might be some fun GitHub packages. Uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, NuGet packages. Let's take a quick look um, for Philips Hue on Nuget. Look at that. Q42 Hue API last updated last week. Don't mind if I do. Open source library for interacting with the Philips Hue bridge. C Sharp supports uh, control your lights from C Sharp supports .NET standard 2.0 and .NET 4.5. Perfect. Take a look at the project website. From uh, is it uh, Michelle Post or Michael Post? Hmm. Uh, open source library blah 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 covers all the Hue API calls. Nice. And I do have a handful of Philips Hue lights in the house. But I would not mind getting some Christmas lights and working with this. Bookmarked. And let's set up for a stream on that. That looks like it'll be fun. We can do something there. This is the type of thing that annoys you to no end, making me log into Access Docs. I agree, Regathian. I kind of agree. Um, <laughs> and and Key Lu says, yeah, light, uh, light bulb APIs, serious business. We need to secure those APIs. We don't, we don't want just any old person getting in there and tinkering with light bulbs. It can be done exactly how I want it. It can, those light bulbs. The only question is, yeah? are you the man to do it? Darn right I am. <laughs> Walter White deals with light bulbs. News at 11. <laughs> Philips Hue is on uh, on on the GitHub. Really? Can we can we look at what Philips is doing? They archived it in 2021. Womp womp. What do we have here? Um, Hutter, Flutter Reactive uh, 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 Bluetooth Low Emission APIs. Neat. Um, and it's all Objective C, Java. You make me sad, Philips Hue. Why don't you just Why don't you just document the APIs and let us build SDKs for our favorite languages? Philips, call me. I don't know. You know the number one eight hundred C sharp Fritz, and we can get in touch here and and do something fun together with your product on stream. Uh, Big Daddy McCoy with a long question. It's okay. Uh, project you're, that you're working on, writing documents. Um, it, and uh, uh, what? No, I'm sorry. The project you're writing has API and UI in the same project for local testing. I use Azure Web Apps and Functions app. When going to the test site in Azure, what do I have to do to break it up for push to get and for, I'm sorry, for push to get for git to push to azure i got you friend big daddy mccoy i got you um here's the deal here's what i would tell you to do you can actually take a look at how i do this in tag zap okay i put it in a container so in tag zap right here let's just take a look it's right here in my workflows um there's a net yaml right this is the typical one that runs every time that there's a push into one of my branches or a pull request. On the push, though, is where we're more concerned. Down here, there's a, a job called image. So if it was not, uh, if it was a workflow dispatch, so somebody said run this, or there was a push into the main branch, right? I create a Docker image. So it'll take that entire application, turn it into a Docker image. It will log into my GitHub repository, right? GHCR is the GitHub repository. 
Um, so let's go over here. So repositories here. There's tags up. And no, not no. Wait, wait, wait. Packages. It'll log into the package repository. There it is, right there. And it will upload tags app as a package here. Right, and you can see it does the Docker metadata and it pushes to that that location. All right. On Azure, I have my app service set up to install the latest version of whatever's in that image location. So I've, I've actually turned it around so that Azure is doing a pull. Now, in order for Azure to know that there's a new version, um, there's a, a web hook, right? That's the last piece is we need to notify that, hey, th this, this thing happened here. Um, zoom out a little bit. There you go. Settings. There's a web hook that gets triggered here. Right, and yeah, that... No, that's still there. That one's not. We can delete that one. I shut that off. Um, oh, fine. Make me do... Make me do the GitHub two-factor authentication dance. Thank you. So when there's a push, when that image gets pushed out, right? So uh, when there's a push and when there's a new registry package, it sends a notification to the Azure website. So it knows, hey, there's a new package. It automatically downloads, unpacks, and restarts the application when that package is, is deployed out there. Real nice workflow. And you can, you can see it, you can see exactly how that workflow is configured here in this .NET YAML file. I will copy and paste that link. That's not the link. Why didn't it copy that link? That was the, there's the right link. So, and that should be copied over to YouTube on the Restream bot for folks that are over there. Check it out if you want to dig in and do a little bit more there. Um, so, hope that helps Big Daddy McCoy. Help Constantine, a local app, introduce data in and execute reminders for different vehicles. Uh, ah, okay, so you're doing a local native application. You have several choices how you can build that application. XAML is, the, is what folks will recommend. I'm not a fan of XAML because it feels like, it feels like HTML's um, evil stepbrother. Where, as web developer, we know HTML like the back of our hand. So, I, I would consider a Blazor hybrid application, which lets you, which lets you build with HTML, package it as a native application, and it'll run anywhere. It'll run on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. That's where I would go with that, and it gives you access to all the local APIs as well. Rob asks, are the Philips bulbs able to switch fast? No idea. No idea. I'd have to get my hands on on some of them to take a look. Chris Jones is here. Hello, hello. Uh, sometimes you have to email them for docs. Don't even get me started about YouTube. You, it, it, YouTube is awful about getting connected to use their APIs. Um, yep. So I have to I have to get an account to get into their dev site to do more there, but I'll figure it out later. Joystick Nick is here. What happened to my my stream deck suddenly disappeared? My stream deck uh, died here. Hang on. Oh my. Come on. Come on, little friend. There it is. There we go. 
Um, Joystick Nick says, Hugh has the best platform. Yes, it's way more responsive and quick than the others. Ah, all right. Thank you, Nick. And yeah, well, maybe I'll get my go down, to make find my way to the Home Depot and pick up some Philips Hue bulbs. Um, yeah, if their API does more with it. So, um, yeah, Philips, Philips Peoples. Philips Peoples. Right? Can we, can we, is there a Philips Hue? Not uh, sure. Um, I'd like to learn more about your uh, developer APIs and, um, uh, and write some software that targets your uh, light bulb products for a holiday themed stream on Twitch. Can uh, someone on your team connect with me um, to uh, discuss? Twitch TV, C Sharp Fritz. Let's see what they say. Right. Never hurts to reach out and say hello. Um, Minoj asks, why not use semantic kernel for sentiment analysis, GPT for language, and hence automating moderation as an optional feature for Tags app? Already done. Already. Uh, Azure content safety is loaded in there. Using just that piece as a hosted service gets me a lot of those features doesn't get me the uh it gets me the automated moderation but it doesn't get me the sentiment analysis i think there's a lot more that we want to layer in that will be more of that picture where azure content safety Minoj, right azure content safety it is is a reasonable reasonably priced service for those types of interactions. Um, so, um, when I click the pricing button and you give me another button to go through to pricing, I mean, come on, friend. Um, here we go. So, 75 cents per thousand text records, buck fifty per thousand images. Um, that's not bad pricing. Right? Like, that's not bad at all. Consider, let me let me throw some numbers out you at to heck, I don't mind showing this. Let's look at the Power BI. I had a Power BI that I built for .NET Conf tag zap interaction here. Let me let me open that chalupa. Uh, yeah, there it is. I'm not it doesn't actually show the messages, but I can show you some of the aggregation. There we go. So over the two days that we used TagZap across every Twitch message, every message we took in from the website, from Twitter and Mastodon, we had 3,400 messages that came in over the two days. 2,800 of them came in over Twitch. That was for a two-day nonstop event, right? And two days, nine, ten hours a day. So if you're running Tags app for an hour or two, maybe four, six hours for a live stream, you're not going to get 5,000 text records in, in a week, right? So over the course of a month, assuming you're not one of the, one, one of the top 5,000, um, Twitch streamers. I am not. Visual Studio is not. Um, you're not going to hit 5,000 text records a month. Right? So it might cost you two bucks, three bucks to run the service. That's not bad at all. Versus running OpenAI, it's going to cost you a little bit more to build and train the model and whatnot. Versus the model's already trained and ready for you and they're just analyzing your content. So... Um, 
Would it be possible to develop Tags app using GitHub Code Spaces? Yes. Yes. You can absolutely use Code Spaces to jump in and build the application. For sure. Um, code Spaces. Clone and open your own Code Space? Absolutely. You can certainly do that. Um, Joystick Nick says the issue with the Philips bulbs is that they're so expensive and you have to you have to developers, use their hub. Developers, Absolutely. Developers, developers, uh, Yoshi Tomi. Hello. Welcome. You're right, Nick. And um, but in doing that in, in seeding control and spending a little bit extra for it there's a lot that I consequently don't have to figure out, right? It's, it's going to make my development, my code that I write and interactions as a developer much, much lower in comprehension that I need to figure out. Yeah, it's going to be way smoother. So, right, it, it, this, this is, right, what we as developers, right, the scale we have to juggle. How much control do you want which control and power you want, which means you're going to have to operate at a little lower level and write a bit more code of your own, and it'll be cheaper. And on the other end is, I'm not going to have absolute control, but it's going to cost a little bit more, and I'm not going to have to write anywhere near as much code. My time to build this is going to be significantly less. As a developer, right, these are the choices we have, and that's something that I think as an engineering department, a lot of folks relish, they enjoy that level of control that they can have over product building. And right, that, that's that's what separates successful organizations and projects from unsuccessful ones. So very good discussion around that. For me on stream, wanting to show off something commodity that folks can download and interact with using their Raspberry Pi device. Yeah, let's make it as easy as possible to wire those things up. Mythin with a question here. Uh, do I know any source of documentation of when on when to choose Azure Functions versus App Service? That is becoming more and more of an interesting discussion. Now that Azure Functions have a bit more of the ASP.NET APIs, Azure Functions, App Service, Azure Container Apps, it's a very blurry discussion. I don't know of any any concrete documentation that shows here's the pluses and minuses of those. I want to take that. Let me take that as a bit of discussion back to my .NET team, my Azure team, because that's a very good discussion that I think we need to make clearer for folks who do need to make that de decision um so i i don't i don't know the answer to it but let's see if we can help them generate a blog post or some documentation to help us make those decisions on youtube hey tq um wondering if i would do a deep dive on aspire yes i will be as i, I want to get through some of these features we we're already building for tags app and then we will aspire a Fi tag zap in December. Yeah, we're we're absolutely going to go through that, and I'll probably pull together a summary video showing the steps of that, how we went through it. Um, Regathian uses Azure Functions for things with fewer endpoints or stuff that interacts with storage accounts. The challenge with Azure Functions versus Azure Container Apps is they now have the same capability to wake up and respond to things and now almost the same API. So why should I choose one over the other is the question. It's tricky. Everything seems so overhead and, and intimidating. Hell, Constantine, that's why the AMA tag is on. Let's talk about it. Let's get you comfortable. I don't want anybody to feel intimidated or like we're not discussing something that you can learn and dive into. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. Please, any of you out there, the AMA tags are on. Folks in chat happy to answer questions, get you pointed to more documentation. I could be writing tags app on my own whenever I want, but I want to write it with you so we learn some things together. And, and some of that intimidation that you might be experiencing 
goes down because you've seen me do it. You comprehend a little bit of what's going on, and I want to help you get confidence. All of you, I'm going to help you get confidence. Hey, I can build this. I can work with this. I know how to write some of that code. So absolutely, let's talk. I want to make sure that, that everybody feels good about that kind of thing. Yeah, Mithin, let me, let me see what I can do to nudge some of those folks. Um, M2DevNet says, Dev.net says, I tried building an API on Azure Functions for work, ran into too many things that seemed like wasn't a good fit. The previous version of Azure Functions that we used with ClipTalk, totally agree. Totally agree. Very difficult to work with. The new version that is using um, ASP not, ASP.NET APIs, much, much better. Is Functions Cloud Agnostic? No. It's 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 called Azure Functions because it's an Azure thing. So that's why folks are it, it, even more so lean into Azure Container Apps where you can build a standard ASP.NET API or build an API with Node or Python, publish it in, in, in a container and it'll start up and stop appropriately for you. Um, so... I think no, no. There's a there's a newer version. V4 is the was the last version that has that API, where you, you need to write things with and decorate it with the Azure function uh, attribute. There's a the, check out Scott Hunter's talk from .NET Conf. Um, right here. Look at look at this. We're gonna go to YouTube. Um, .NET Conf 2023. Um, Scott Hunter and uh, yeah, there's day one. Um, <laughs> no, no, that was 2022. Um, it's right at the end of day one. Um, we go over here. I know there's a playlist. Playlist. And .NET Conf 2023. Ta-da! Um, building cloud native apps. That's the Aspire session with Glenn and Fowler. It is... Nope, that's Hanselman. Oh, shoot. Hang on. Um, because it was Hunter and Paul Yuck. There it is. Um, there you go. We know these guys. It was funny. So, the, so they're presenting, and I'm literally sitting just off stage outside the studio right here, looking in the window at them. Like, hi! Um, so they don't have a link to the actual materials of this. There's the transcript, but they, they absolutely talk about the new functions. Their bicep doing things with Aspire. They talk about it in this session. Let me drop that link in chat. Yeah, there we go for you, Big Daddy McCoy. Yeah. So, take a look. Um, bah, 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 bah. Let me see here. It has changed, yes. Digital Dummy asks, is it worth it to get the Azure certificates? Depends. If your organization believes in certifications, yes. I think it's worth it to go through the training and studying to learn about them. To, to take the test because there are things in there that'll make you a well-rounded Azure user, let's say. User, administrator, developer, it'll help you. Getting the certification, if your organization relies on certifications, you'll feel better feel better about it. You'll, you'll have that credential to carry around. Absolutely, I think you should spend the time reviewing the materials and those materials and topics are freely available out there. On YouTube, C Sharp Titan asks, what are my thoughts on primary constructors? 
I I'm not sold on them yet. Um, I I appreciate folks using them. Whatever, if they make you happy, great. But I'm not I'm not sold on using them in my code yet. So, Chris Funk says Happy Turkey Eve. Happy Turkey Eve to you. It's Thanksgiving tomorrow here in the states. Uh, Caveman Crafting said when I first started looking at certs, then read the study books for them, but have yet to get a cert. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, Caveman. It's just the studying for them is going to make you a better developer, operator, manager of those tools. Getting the certification just proves that you know the material. There are some organizations that are going to say, that's great, I'm glad you got that, and it helps their credentials as a consulting company, as a partner company. It helps with those interactions when they go to to sell their services and those interactions. It does. Other organizations, not so much. The, the dot-com startup that I was working at in 2008, when I went to TechEd, when there was a TechEd, and I got my Microsoft Certified Developer uh, it wasn't cert- Microsoft uh, Microsoft certified professional. I only took two of the tests. I didn't take the third. Um, but it, when when I got that certification, I was like, hey, you know, I I went through and I and I took the test. I wanted to make sure that I knew my stuff, and I presented to them with that certificate. And for them as a startup, they're like, we don't care. Great, uh, we we're glad that you have this education but it doesn't do anything for us because nobody's asking, hey, do you have certified developers? Now, it was MCSD at that time. So let me get the gunners on wearing the razors today. Razor torpedoes. So um, for building up a Microsoft partnership with benefits, yes, Microsoft does look for folks that are certified. That's how they know that you've reached a level of proficiency, right? And that that kind of makes sense, right? If you're going to partner with an organization to be able to have a document that says that we have, right? We we have 10 of our of our IT folks, our developers are certified proficient with technology X. Definitely helps to to set credentials and with another organization. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about, Bite Lord. I have no idea. You love the primary constructors? Um, nice to get rid of the huge chunk that's there just to do dependency injection. Eh, okay. It felt like Angular, and I'm not an Angular person. So you're going to have to talk to Angular Fritz. This is C-sharp Fritz. So, um, the primary constructors right now, it's not suitable for actual DI. Uh, you're welcome, Hell Constantine. And, and I want to make sure that some of those things are achievable, right? That that folks believe and, and understand and know that you can do these things. It's, um, it, it, I want it to be something that we learn about on stream and you, you look at and go, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's dive back in here. I completely forgot, forget where I left off. Johan helped us out last time by sending over a pull request, sending over a pull request, sending over a pull request. Thank you. To take care of this issue, you could right-click on the waterfall view in Tags app and accidentally get the, bring up the context menu. So Johan put in just a simple fix here to make sure that you couldn't do that on the waterfall view. Um, so big thanks to Johan for that contribution. That that's was an easy couple lines of code that they sent over, and now Johan's on Johan's on the list. Right. Of contributors. Let's talk about let's talk about Tag Zap. Let's dive in here because we started building this block list of users feature here. I need to open a console. 
and we can we can dig in here a little bit. I I've been wanting to show our friends Joystick Nick and, and LA Face a little bit about Tag Zap. Um, what do I got here? Um, I don't don't care. Um, and I'm gonna jump over to my main branch. I'm going to delete that branch. Do a little bit of uh, source code hygiene here. What branches do I have? <gasps> Too much junk here. Um, we can delete the Azure queue. So we added the ability for messages to be added from a website. We need to document and make that available for folks to interact with. Um, so we can build more websites, more ways to interact with that, which could even get into things like IFTTT, being able to interact with that. Imagine being able to take questions from text messages. Anybody know somebody at Twilio? Uh, let's take uh, questions from a text message that would be really cool that would be really cool right um let's talk about it i'm actually going to start up the application here so we can we can see a little bit of it T check out the link up at the top there and you can see a little bit of what's going on inside of this um, Instagram, I'm going to leave out there. Moderation filters, we can we can delete because we did match. We did merge that uh, feature moderation filters. Um, we did take care of the mod screen touch. I wish I could just like say here's a bunch of these to delete. Can I do that? Can I do that? Is that a thing? Hey, it did. All right, that's better. A little bit cleaner here. Um, what was? So we're gonna work. Uh, we're gonna work on the block. Um, hang on. Make sure I have all the things. Cool. And uh, we're working on the block feature. So we can block users. Uh, uh, cool. Give me the latest stuff there. And then merge in what I currently have. And push that back out. All right. Now that we've, I'm done that, that little bit of juggling, let's open up the source code. No, I'm not even going to open the source code. Now I should open the source code. Make sure I check my uh, configuration here and then we'll launch this and we'll take a look at what it is. Did not talk about the future of Sam Altman. Um, so to be clear, the last week of nonsense at OpenAI, everything went back to the way it was and now there's a new board of directors. Done. Like there's nothing more to discuss. For some reason, my camera is twitching. I don't know why. N nothing more to discuss. Everything's just been reset to the way it was a week ago with a new board of directors on OpenAI. Done. <laughs> there is a Netflix documentary series happening in there that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need to be covered and we can just move on from. Um, yes, Twitter's turned off. YouTube chat, I'm going to turn that off. Twitch chat is activated. Yes, please. That's good. That's fine. I'm going to turn off Azure content safety. I'd like to be able to click. I can't click. Live streaming Java coding is a thing. Um, how you doing there, uneven donkey? Um, I'm not on. Yeah, look at that. It, it crashed. That feels good. Mm 
the in keyword? No, the Angular discussion. Um, try this again. Disabling Copilot might help. No. Yeah, we want Twitch chat. No, we don't want that one. Yes, we want Mastodon. No, we don't want content safety. Um, so... Let's get this uh, let's get this party started, shall we? And we'll talk about what tag zap is here. So up top here, I'm going to go into I have a source folder with the web application, and let's run this, take a look at it, talk about it, and start poking around at some of these new features we want to do. It's not going to run. Oh no! It yeah. It's broken. It broke. And I'm very curious as to what happened with Emmett Shear at OpenAI. Yes. There's a whole thing going on there. Yeah, move that into the Discord so I can catch up on it later. Um, Postgres messaging service. It broke. Okay. Right, this is in Azure Safety Moderation, Azure Safety Logger. What do you mean there's no thing for that? Coming out of Postgres Messaging Service 29. Dun, 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 dun. Here. Because we added another thing in there. Notify new messages, service provider configuration. Oh, there's a cache. It's looking for an iMemory cache. I started working on this and I have no idea. We're caching the blocked users. So we need an iMemory cache coming into this. Okay. This might not work yet. Um, because I don't have anything registered for memory cache yet. Yeah, Emmett must have made a bit of cash for literally working two days for the company. So, okay, we put that in there, and now it's saying it doesn't know what provider configuration repository is in app extensions. Here we go. It's not loaded yet. No. Thank you. Right there. Because we don't have cash yet for it to load. Get required service. I memory cache. Thank you. And that goes there. Mm hmm. I fully expect when this starts, it's going to fail and say, oh, I don't know what memory cache is. Do, 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 do. Started? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's the errors. Right. Service lookup, it doesn't know what it is.
The game is afoot, my friends. Let me save what I've got here. Let me roll back and show you what it does, and then we'll go. Uh, we'll we'll go at it for here. Um, let's see here. I'm going to commit. Um, injecting memory cache. Let me jump back over to the main branch so you can see this thing actually working. So, why am I registering it that way? Inside here, I'm registering it as a singleton so that it loads up and it has all the things, but it it needs to, there's a thing here where it gets a collection of the social media providers. It's getting an innumerable of them. It doesn't do that normally, so I need to manually configure it to load. Um, still exited with an error. That, that feels that feels great. That that feels so good. I'm, I'm glad we're here together. Base provider manager 99 while coming in from YouTube chat provider 43. This says YouTube chat configuration is All right. Um I'm going to wipe it. It's not loaded correctly. So I'm going to wipe it. Um, don't need those. <laughs> so it's not even there. Well, that feels good. You can default inject a set of services, but injecting a collection of things that all adhere to the same interface, it doesn't know how to do that. Um, we'll update later. Thank you. I appreciate the suggestion, but not right now. You're in my way. Um, so let's do this. If raw config equals null or don't do anything. There we go. Here's tag zap. Can I use the new keyed services? Haven't tried it yet. No, no, no need to hide. No, no. Um, so we have contents. We should start to see some of the Twitch content come through here as it picks up some of the chatter from Twitch. Right. <laughs> yep. We should start to see that flowing in. And but there's recent Mastodon content. There you go. Would I be open to a discussion sometime about getting started with content creation? Why? There's other folks that do a nice job of that. Um, so this is a list of all the content that we're searching for. We're configured to search for on the hashtag, hashtag .net on Mastodon. Developers 
but uh, Sonic Six, hello, welcome. But it's also monitoring Twitch. It's also listening to content coming in from a website. Um, and we can approve and, and we can reject content, and it will appear. And then. No, and then, and it will appear on this waterfall view, where we can then interact with it and present it on screen, or it'll also appear on this overlay. Why aren't you opening? And then we can put that in as lower third on our screen. Now we put it on the green background so that we could key that out. But realistically, if you wanted to put it like over here in Twitch, in, o in OBS, you would make the background transparent and it would just appear. Surge, that's exactly something that we need to be able to do with some of the configuration updates that I want to put in here. Be able to turn on and off sources without disconnecting. Yes. Um, that's absolutely something we want to be able to do here. But it's not there. I'm not sure about the named services either. It's... It, there's a complexity of configuration there that folks are asking for that when I hear that level of complexity, it, it, it's a warning sign to me that you're not doing something as efficiently as you could. So, yeah, you're going to put two implementations of the same thing and give them keys. Now, that feels like that might be something you might want to do for a multi-tenant application, but why? Um, we did that. I didn't know that, so. Um, well, there's a thing. You can see that's too big. Like, I'm zoomed in, and it's just too big. We need to figure out sizing a little bit better as well. Service discovery using keyed services is kind of standard, something like Kubernetes. Right. I, I, I hear that. But I would submit that needing to find named instances of services so that you have different pools of services that do the same thing. Um, there's another level of abstraction that you could have introduced there to separate that. HTTP client does it, yes. Yes. So that's... At its simplest, what Tags app does just gives you the ability to to click into these messages and bring them up and show them. Where we want to get here, and, and I am noticing that it doesn't click and open a second time. Jeremy! Jeremy Knight underscore me just resubscribed for 47 months. Again and again, smile. Thank you so much. And I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Um, let's, uh, uh, bug cannot, uh, open the same message twice, uh, on Waterfall twice uh, consecutively and I will mark that as a bug it's not a bad first issue somebody can take a look at that if they'd like so so when you think about and you look at what we've got here 
all of this is customizable and we put the .NET conf header up there and and um, and and set this up so that it it looks good for .NET conf but now .NET conf is over and we're going to put in features to make this easier for folks to to take off the shelf hey I want a copy of that let me run this for my event let me run this for my stream um and allow this to be easily customizable. Now we do, right? We do have the ability to customize over here and specify whatever you'd like for the header, for the name of the site, but we pushed through for this to be dot, to say .NET Conf on it. Configuring the various services is a big thing that we need to go back and revisit because the configuration here for the providers while it's nice to be able to see these values here, it's very difficult to manage. We're going to go back to that, tune that, tweak it, upgrade it, make it a heck of a lot easier for folks to start running the service and layer these in as they'd like. Um, point of keyed services, you don't need to know IPs because they change. Yes, that's DNS though. So, right, like, if you need a named service, right? You're saying, hey, connect me over to those, th that collection of APIs over there. Well, I'm just asking for those APIs, that named service. If you need to further key that and get more descriptive of it, be more descriptive in your service. That's the, the, the uber simplification that I would look at. just give it a better name that describes that so um curl log asks can i have an aot background service in .NET 8 you can build a service in .NET 8 and compile it aot yes can you have it can you have a background service in a web application that's running aot and the rest of the web is not no if it's one pro the an entire process must be aot with the new chiseled containers that are available, you can AOT compile your application, your 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 service, stick it in a, into a chiseled container, and you might get away with as small a container as like 10 meg to deploy and run, and it'll run very, very fast inside a container in the background. Nowadays, lots of people want to use other things that aren't DNS for some reason. It, DNS has been around for 30 years and is rock hard, stable, reliable. Stop. Stop. Come on. Stop reinventing something that's been amazing and you rely on every day to get to your favorite websites like this one you're watching this video on. Stop. It works. Just use it. Oh, I want a better naming thing that uses my own naming, whatever. Knock yourself out. But when I want to get stuff done, I'm going to use the thing that I've been able to trust for 30 years. Go pound sand. Ah, please. It's ridiculous. So the feature we had started working on, and I want to wrap up before we go back and start start. Re refactoring how we do configuration here because while this this works it's complex it's a little bit clunky and I want to make it easier to start up and configure these things um, so let's go back over not that one no let's go back to where I was working in we were working on being able to block users So let's do that. Hey, Code with Sean. Hello. So, right, and what did I change in here? I put a big old if statement around that. Let me stash that. Um, jump back over to the other branch. Reapply that. Um, uh, stopping processing on YouTube chat if no config. 
no config present. All right. Oh, fine. Thank you. So this should have restarted. Yep. So it's out there. It's running. It's doing its thing. But I want to start digging in a little bit further on blocking. Resub? Thank you, Napalm. It has been. And, and we're going to revisit some of that configuration code that you started with us and see if we can put in a, uh, an on-ramp to make that a heck of a lot easier to work with. So I've got one blocked user listed here. Right? And this was something we had started right here. Right? And there's that blocked user. And, and we more or less hard-coded, hey, you have to select this person put them into the blocked list and it'll appear here in the moderation. But... Yeah, we need to figure out more. Um, did I use tags app for .NET Conf? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We used it a lot for .NET Conf. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, so key features. Did they cut it off? I think they cut off the Q&A. They did. They cut off the Q&A. Um... Back over here. The keynote. Is it still on here, like at the end? Yeah, there it is. Um, there we go. How's that? There's our friends Katie Savage and Jamie Singleton using Tags app as part of .NET Conf. And uh, here, right, let's let's go to the end of day one. Uh, oh, you're not, wait, let's go to the end of day one. Uh, let's go, here we go. So here's our friend Richard Campbell with uh, David Ortnow, Maddie Montequilla, and they're using Tags app, reviewing, taking questions, and showing that off. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Maybe a secondary display for, or a teleprompter for the presenters. Um, great ideas. We had stuff like that set up. It was just a little bit hard to, uh, to come through here. Um, so, yeah, you can... Right, you'll see. There he is. And there's even a point where Richard is looking for a question. Watch. He starts scrolling through. There you go. Like, Tags app showed up beautifully during the event. Um, more and more you look at, it, at Aspire, you like the dashboard for Def, but the rest of it is a convenient way to get a good first setup. It, it's a preview. Big Pod. Aspire is in preview. There's a lot more that they're going to do with it. So we're getting there. Um, there, But there was a point here with Richard where he starts scrolling through Tags app. Like, he literally just flips through like it's nobody's business. Um, to go find questions. So, there's a question from our friend Eric. Um, I'll go you one further, Napalm. D you ready for this? I'll go you one further. And I didn't show this on stream. I'll show it now. What do you mean it's not available? Let's 
do this. I want to make sure you see this. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Uh, that Junie Von Esch. Now, the way that we ended Junie doing underscore that is we Von underscore up... Esch just resubscribed for 33 months. Shh, don't tell my boss, lol. How to ban a white tagger. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And uh, I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much. Yeah, Vanna White the Tags app. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, it's very Vanna White, the interactions with Tags app. So we, we, we didn't use Tags app as part of day three. Um, come on, get to the end here. I'm, I'm trying to scrub through to the end. Kind of hard to with a 32 hour stream. Um, so it's just nine minutes more there. That's me. Yeah, you know that guy. I want to make sure you see this part while I'm wrapping up. Come on, there's Javier and Didi. Um, I, I'll share this on stream. Everything that you saw at my desk here was there on purpose. So there's a bunch of these little uh, .NET bot race cars. I have a bunch of them. Where'd they go? These little guys. They're little stress toys. And they've got the, the right, you can see there. The .NET developers, 8 developers, developers, on there. Developers, You'll get them at developers. events if you're uh, .NET Conf local events. Fit Dev, welcome. Um, so here's swag bag winners. Come on, keep scrolling through there, Twitch. I know you can do it. Um, where would I send somebody for uh, course resources about Blazor? Um, I, I, quite frankly, I'd send you to one of my Blazor workshops on YouTube. Um, no, it doesn't include Blazor United, but the United stuff you can pick up easily from where Blazor left off from those other versions. Everybody's at the same place on that. Here we go. I showed and I thanked everybody. Oh, come on. You saw on day one and day two on screen, there's an open source application called TagSat. It's been built on stream and we had folks from the community contribute a little bit of code, a little bit of images, a little bit of feedback. I want to thank all these folks who you see on the contribution graph here. I want to thank them. Did I, wait, did I even show, I didn't show the contribution graph. I didn't even show it. I forgot to put it live. <laughs> show it again. Show it again, go back, right. go back up there. Just there you scroll. go. And I'll scroll down slowly so that you can see them. So big thanks to all these folks for helping out with tags. So there you go. I want to make sure that you're recognized that your name gets up on the screen. So big thanks to you for helping make .NET Con go this year. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So there you go. Big applause during a Microsoft right. event for all of your contributions out there, all of us who worked on that. Um, so, um, <laughs> Microsoft dropped a, a lot of uh, new getting started videos on YouTube. So because Blazor came in so hot, it, 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 they literally were building it right through RC2. Um, we aren't done the new getting started videos for Blazor yet. They'll be coming... January. So, because folks are taking off for December, you know what I'm saying? Um, it, Dee Dee's phenomenal. She really has the .NET community in mind when, when she's helping out with things. So there you go. There's the latest on, on Tags app. But we're going through and building this blocked user feature so that we can, we can block folks from being able to interact. Now, I completely forget where that goes to. Hey, Thindall. Hello. Welcome. The foundation of Blazor in, in .NET 8 is server-side rendering. Yes, it is. 
Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Thindle. And I'm done my coffee. Time to move on to the Alani. All right. Um, so let's let's go back in and uh, yeah, go ahead and reload all the things. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. Um, so we had started. I have no idea where I put this. Like I completely forget where I left off. You know, you know what I mean. Um. Let's see, I was in here. Let me start a draft pull request. Yeah, don't mind if I do. No. Oh, is it still? Yeah. Um, add block users uh, capability. And this is going to address 114 and 218. Right, do I have that right? 218. Yep. So I'll create that as a draft PR, and then I can take a look at the files that I changed, because I don't remember where I was on this when I left off. 24 files changed. What all did I change? Moderation repository, because I added all the blocked capabilities. Notify of blocked count. I have a blocked user object that's defined. Um, we have the ability to pass around a iMemory cache. Notify of new content. Check if this content is created by one of the blocked users in the cache. If they are blocked, moderate with, with reason that they're a blocked user. Okay. And then there's the migration to add that. We should update to the .NET 8 RTM while we're here. I'll save that for another pull request. Get blocked users, get current blocked user count, block a user, unblock a user. So I've got all the features. And the ability to show if a user, to show who's been blocked here. So, let me try blocking, putting Space Shot on that list, right? Just to see uh, Twitch chat. Well, no, you know what? I'll put myself in there, right? So there, Twitch, C Sharp Fritz, no end date. So now if I go back over to the moderation view, there's two blocked users. Hey, I should be blocked from Tags app. Nothing. So if I'm a blocked user, it should have done something with that. And it didn't. So... Trolling read-write claim? Um... Hmm. So what did it do? Right? If I'm a blocked user... Hmm. Let's go back over here. So I turned off... Right? I turned off this, right? Yep. Azure content safety is turned off. So it should be getting a list of blocked users. It shouldn't. And 
this is actually doing the blocking. Hmm. Chris Jones, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea. It, throw that into the issues list so we can talk about that. I like that. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, I don't think this should be here. I feel like there's a chain of notifications. There's a, a, a pipeline that we need to develop. Took forever 15 to 20 minutes. I wouldn't call that forever. I'd call that a pretty good morning. There's a refactoring that needs to be done here, but... Um, establish a notification pipeline. Yes. We'll figure that out. Um, right? If something, if it took you 15 to 20 minutes to migrate to a new version of a thing that is that much more complete, that's, that's phenomenal. Um, uh, D. Revstead asks, no Aegis chatter. Well, welcome. Aegis being, uh, being, Hey, you know, it, you're it, you're too young to understand this. Uh, look at the old folks working on these things, you know, that kind of thing. You know, everybody's welcome. Everybody's equal here. That's all. So. No, 15 to 20 minutes is not forever. <laughs> Trust me. Ask folks that have been trying to migrate... Uh, um, ASP.NET Web Forms applications. 15 to 20 minutes is not forever. Ask somebody who's migrating an Angular app to React. 15 to 20 minutes is not forever. <laughs> um, okay, so... This should have... Right, so hang on. If we look at my moderation repository, so when we block user, we notify that there's a new blocked count. So when we're notified, hey, there's more. Oh, well, there's your, there there's your problem right there. Um. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Seriously? Um, because when this loads... It attempts to get the blocked user's cache. But when does it ever populate it? What's the best way to get into learning C-sharp? Uh, take a look at uh, dot, dot .net. Click the learn button up at the top. There's all kinds of videos and training material that you can get. So. We don't have a way to pre-hydrate the cache here. Right? Um... Right, let's just do a quick find on that and see if it's out there somewhere being loaded. That's the one that I just put in. Migrations now. Yeah, we're not loading it anywhere. Uh, 
We need to load that John. That's right, I joined. Um, yeah, the .NET YouTube channel has some great playlists, including one from me, teaching how to get started with C-sharp as well. Um, what if... What if we load and set that cache? in here right like let's let's actually take this uh, reload blocked user cache right and I can put that in the constructor up here. Right, and it'll reload that. Uh, no, reload that. Here we go. Meow. It's that fast. So that's taking a little bit of time to load from the database. I do not feel safe about that. Thank you. So now I'm listed as one of the folks up here. This should be blocked. No. Feels bad, man. Why wasn't that moderated? Uh, blocked users. Um, yep, there I am. Okay. Give me something here. Um, no. Um, sure. I feel feels bad. Missing from clause entry for blocked users. Well, there's there's your first problem. No. Uh, timestamp. Mm-hmm. Those are just the approves that I pushed through. So it did not pick that up. The on-screen URL carousel. The URL carousel. Which carousel are you talking about, Thindall? Oh, the pre-roll. I put a QR code on there so that you could get there. Yeah. It, yeah, that's, that's a production thing. And yes, they did show and disappear a little bit too quickly. Thank you for the follow, Zatara. Appreciate you joining us. Um, so why isn't this... Hitting that breakpoint. Let's attach the debugger and take a look. It's on. Should be right in here. Mm. 
Yeah, let's see what we get here. Let's attach that up. There we go. Not the Docker ones. Now, which one do I get? Eeny, meeny, miny. That one. Not that one. Yeah. Start it by hand. Yeah, the check this out links at the bottom. We definitely felt that they were also hidden behind the captions. There was... Captions for day one, for some reason, weren't turned on when we started the event. We don't know why. There, there was somebody that was very upset that they weren't turned on. And they wanted us to stop the event, turn them on, and restart the event. I, I appreciate the concern and wanting to reach out and make sure that everybody can watch the event. It would have been a mess. And... and Sorry, there. It, captions will be in all the recordings, and we'll have it going forward. But they're in the YouTube vods. Um, this, this. Um, can I do a PSA? No. It's it. It doesn't, for some reason, shut down. There it is, right there. There's something in there that just locks up and doesn't shut down. I think it's the background servos. So let's take a look and we'll get into a little bit more of this. So this is where I'm expecting to... There we go. False. Okay, so let's look at the cache. One item in there, yeah. Size zero. That doesn't feel good. Um, it's not showing me what's in there. Uh, take a look here. Cache blocked users equals cache. Mm. And uh, that's going to be a list. Really, that should be an object at that point. You know? Like, that should be a record. Um, there we go. Cash blocked users, two in there. There we go. YouTube chat and Twitch. And the message that came through... Twitch... And the author username. Oh, look at that. It's got the at in front of it. That's why it's not getting blocked. Hey there. Nalian just resubscribed for 11 months. Thank you so much, Nalian. And uh, we'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much for that support with your prime. Uh, the ads from Twitch, I believe. Because that was in the content passing through. Try that one more time.
So back into the breach here is blocked true. So now that should on the moderation screen. There we go. Part of me thinks I should have the blocked user entry there. Right? This should be blocked also. Did I hit my, I hit my breakpoint. There it is. Um, and there you go. Thank you. Thank you, DJ N1. Appreciate trying the reverse there. Yeah, making sure we get that working. And if I, right, if I go into my blocked users list here and I remove Jeff those items that were rejected, I was blocked then. It's still blocked. Think this through. We did the unblock, which should have triggered that that goes and resets the blocked users um is that used i don't think that's used no get rid of that um right this should be called in block user and it's called over here in unblock user. So when I unblock, <laughs> is the key correct? Um, so the key is blocked users here and it's, it's just gonna refresh it. And it uses, it's using the same method in both locations to set that. Yeah, Th thank you, Kamen, uh, Kamen I, I, I see what you're going on there. Uh, fine. <laughs> Jeez. Um. Yeah, casing in mixed. Um. So I'll tell you what. To Thin Doll's point, let's introduce a constant. Um. Blocked users cache, right? So it's the same in in both locations. All right, just to just to reduce that. Um. So if it ran through here. Right? I mean, we know it knows how to do it the first time through. Xbox One Online. Hello. So back over here. So that should go through. Yes. 
So now if I go over to the other screen, let's go Twitch, block me, right? Back over here, now it says two. This should be blocked. No, wasn't blocked. It's like it didn't call it. What did I do? Look at the messages there in the output window. It inserted the blocked user there. It should have notified. There it's selecting back out the blocked users. like wait a minute the notifier here block user because that's probably going to be the first one we do now. Mm, there. Should be stepping through and hitting those things. Oh, don't hang out on Black Friday sales sites. They're so tempting. So, so tempting. I'm going to go over to blocked users and I'm going to turn that off. There it is. Notifier is... It's on the signal R notifier. And it just says notify that here's the new blocked account. Well, there's your problem. This should have been passed. That's right, I was trying to do this through the cache. I still need to send a notification that it changed. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in a, in a circular reference. Okay, that's where we ended up. Um, crumbs. Uh, hey there on YouTube. Where do I work now? Same place I've been working. How about you? Where do you work now?
Um, I work for Microsoft. Yeah, this is going to be a circular reference. So how do we get around that? We can go through the cache. But if I do go into the cache, I need to reset and like notify, hey, there was an update to the cache. Can we... Is that a feature of the iMemory cache? I don't know. Mm, get current statistics? No. Is there a notify here? No. <coughs> so how do we get that? Um, feels bad, man. How do we get it? How do we pull it in? How... Well, wait a sec. We get the cache each time. That's going to be on each message. We're loading that cache. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's not terrible, but that's a lot. What are the risks of working two remote jobs at the same time? You, you, you could get confused between the two jobs and mix and match code that you're writing. Could be a real problem. Getting found out is going to be a real problem. Trying to find your first job without experience? Look for those junior developer jobs and, and don't be afraid to apply. Don't be afraid to to send out lots of resumes share information about some of the content some of the projects that you've worked on while you were learning so maybe the, i do have do i have the cash coming in here i do not if i bring the cash in here Right? And... I don't like copying that, but for right now, I'll take it. Uh, is it possible to land a remote internship as a computer science student in a third world country? It's going to be very, very difficult. Very, very difficult to do that. It's possible. Yeah, juniors need to learn, so doing it remotely is, that's hard. Um, so let's save off the cash here. What am I doing? I can just generate that. Yep, and I see Karnak is not running, so you can't see my keystrokes. Let's turn that back on. So when we block a user, Yes, and um, I need to get the list of current users. That is awaitable. And the value we're going to set to reload it is... That. so that it updates the cache directly. And now I can take that out of... Yeah. 
it should work. Two full-time jobs is very hard to do. Is it possible to learn programming yourself or do you need a teacher? It's very possible to learn yourself. Very, very possible to do. So there I am, I'm listed as blocked. Right, so this should be blocked. There it is, blocked. And I will unblock me. This, this should not be blocked. There we go. And to close the loop, this should be blocked again. And there it is. There we go. All right. So I've got a full loop there on the blocked users getting blocked appropriately based on whether they're on the blocked list. Okay. Yeah, no, don't sleep on the job. Trying to run two full-time jobs at once is very, very hard to do. That is a ton of stress. I do not, do not, not recommend it. Taking side gigs, consulting, running yourself as a consultant, managing your own workload across several different customers. Yes, you can do that because they know and appreciate that you are working with several different organizations. But trying to do two full-time jobs, they expect your undivided attention. That is, I, I no, don't do that. Um, okay, so I feel good about the basics of that feature being done. Right, I can I can clearly see here's my list of currently blocked users. And I can run through and I can remove unblock folks from being able to interact that. Interact that. Is there a Microsoft office in South Korea? Uh I think so. I think so. Microsoft office locations. Locations list. So there's U.S. locations. I want international locations. That's, I, I want, I want more. I want more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seoul, there you go. There's an MTC in Seoul. So. Yep. Uh, do I have a quick way of blocking users? That, Chris Jones, is the next piece. Let's save what we've got. Oh, and by the way, we could really use some unit tests for this. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm saying. Um, completed block unblock feature. I'd like, oh yeah, I'd like to be able to have a quick way to block a user. And I think we want to update the user interface so that if So that if this is a user was blocked scenario, it shows blocked user as the reason on this. Because I think it's coming through with that. So let's go over to site.js. So a blocked user, it won't go through and find their previous messages and block them. Does blocked content become visible when a user is unblocked. No. It, 
nothing becomes visible unless it's explicitly approved. Nothing, nothing goes on the waterfall UI over here. Let's uh, do this over here. Nothing goes on here unless, unless you actually hit the check to turn it on as approved. And then it appears immediately over here. And I see what you're doing over there, Ellie face. I am not doing two full-time jobs. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. How you doing there, friend? It's great to see you. I hope you're having a good morning. Um... So, you, <laughs> so, no, I'm not doing four jobs, low fizz. No. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think. Unblocking user doesn't automatically make their content visible. Nothing automatically makes content visible here. Um, it will make their future content, if you have moderation turned off, that's a good question. If you have moderation turned off, does the content still appear if it's being automatically handled? Yes, I'm doing education and entertainment. Thank you, Junie. I approve that message. Yes, and there it is right there. So, um, keep that message right there above our friend David Fowler. Keep it right there, right above that message. Moving on. Uh, edutainment. That's right. How many hats can I wear at once? Actually, let me show you something. So I got my collection of swag that was sent out to speakers. <clears throat> we'll come back to this. There's um, there's .NET bot socks. I already showed you the .NET bot race car with the cool .NET 8 number on there. Um, there's a set of stickers. stickers and um, this is this is the one that I really like there's a Qi charger for your phone made out of bamboo nice this is going to have a place on my desk but we also had hats made Bucket hats made with .NET bot with little jetpack. But check this out. They're reversible. How cool is that? Look at that. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Chris Funk asking for a hat change. What would you like? Um, so that's a little bit of what's going on and what folks are going to get when you attend a local .NET conf event near you. Johan! You have just resubscribed for 59 months. Thank you so much. And you can see when I right click over here, nothing happens. That's a contribution from Johan. Thank you so much. 59 months with us and I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. I'm turning this right side out. And we want party time. <clears throat> Wait, I need to kind of, I can't, I can't hear it. There we go. Right, we got that. Um, and uh, let's see, let's do, let's do party time. It's over here somewhere. Um, voice mod, voice mod. I know you're here. There it is. 
Do do do. And uh, where's party time? better here we go five minutes of party time because that's that's just the way it goes party mode I just look at me i look like dot net ll cool j it turned off it actually tried to activate party time there we go uh five minutes on the clock for dot net ll cool j where's Joystick Nick, I want to hear him riff on this one. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so, I agree with the comment, I think it was Chris Jones mentioned, when you're moderating, it'd be nice to be able to quickly block someone. <laughs> he is, but he was a rapper first, wearing bucket hats like this. Uh, without the, the, the dot net bot on uh, his videos. So, um... No, that doesn't count, Thindal. Sorry. See, look at this. I'm collect catching up on all the chatter here. Look at it! It's amazing. Um... Let's see here. Um... What if... Quick way of blocking. So right now you mouse over, you get approve, reject. How do we make it easy to say there's other things I want to do with this user's record? something to you um, I think there's an ellipsis and maybe maybe we put it at the bottom so there's three things you can do there's a little triangle you click the ellipsis and another menu appears with advanced options well I think there's other things we may want to do besides reject Hey, Duca Soft. The username at the top with a hover over effect. So we say Surly Dev. But I want it to be nice and big and chunky so your finger can touch it. I like the idea of having an, an ellipsis button or a more button. So we we'll move these two up a little bit, put a more button down at the bottom. That opens up and says, right now, block user. I think there's a mute terms feature that'll sudden that'll appear. A chevron, that's not a bad idea. Chris Funk, that's not bad. Um But I think there's options we may want to go through there are all moderators using computers no we had some moderators using an ipad during dotnet conf it's not gonna know this hat sorry um hmm. i like these ideas i like them a lot so, if I give you a third action, because there's also, there's also the ability that we want to add. Oh, cool, thank you. Um, 
content from block users. Yes, blur filter, I like that. Um, there's also, I want to be able to respond to that viewer on their platform. So having an ellipsis or a more actions and be able to choose block user and respond to user, I think are good secondary actions to show in a pop-up menu. Yeah, yeah, there's something there. And I think that list will grow over time because I think there's also an option we want to consider for VIP. Hey, you know what? This A.S. Hanselman guy is really talking up a good, a good bit of content for us on Twitter. Let's take messages where he tags .netconf and promote that automatically. I like that. We're done with party time. Turn that off. Turn it off. Oh no. Hamsters. You want hamsters? You want hamsters? You can't handle the hamsters. Did it turn it on? No, it didn't. I, I don't get it. See? See? There, there we go. go. Hamsters for five minutes. All right. Um, moving on. There was a question here from Steel Savior on Twitch. Is C Sharp the best language in the world? Well, I really like it. So there's that. Is it the best language? Define best. There's things that it's really good at. There's things that it's not so good at. So define, how do you define best? For me, as a general purpose language, I can use to build all kinds of things. Websites, mobile apps, native applications, services, giant cloud scale applications that'll take over the world. It's really great for that. So what do you think? Dragon Song thought you had an audio problem. Sorry, no, it's hamster's mode. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, so I think there's several different things you, we want to be able to do from a follow-up menu that really are secondary actions beyond just approve and reject. I do wonder about block users when moderation is turned off. What happens there? Right? Like. Uh, you can't take me seriously? Really? I thought it was the hat that you couldn't take seriously. So, yeah, program languages are a matter of taste. A matter of how do you think? How do you work? And that's why there are so many different programming languages. Folks are successful building projects, software, with different languages because they have different needs. There are general purpose languages that work great for many different things, not so great at others, and they're not the most optimized for everything. So, um, where was I here? Ah, yes! I'm going to turn off moderation and see what happens. Like, let's test that, you know? Let's turn off moderation, right? There. Now, why is it in quotes? Can we talk about that for a second? 
Let's go look for that. Mm. And he's trying to get it as a bullion. So what happens if I do, do that? Like that should be a thing, right? Rebuild! Imperial! Hello! Hi! It's me! It's, it's the .NET LL Cool J hat wearing Fritz. How are you? Um, yes, they put me in hamsters mode. Dukasoft changed my voice. Give me another minute and we'll talk. Um, so here we go. I turned off moderation. So everything flows through to the waterfall. See? There you go. Right? It's... I gotta fix that double click. See? So it's right there. Um... Interesting, it didn't pause when I moused over. See? Oh, no, it is in pause. And then mouse out. And... It's not picking up. It's not going back into play mode. Right? It should... Play. C-sharp cool Fritz! Right there. From our friend Junie. Yes. Right. That's me. Um... Yeah, there it goes. It's flip-flopping the pause in the bottom corner there. So... While we're loading and showing all these messages, because moderation is turned off... Let's go back up here. Yeah. You can't block users because there's no moderation. Have a good one, Thin Doll. Take care. So, that kind of makes sense. What? More hamsters? Give me a minute here. Let me, let me go back to normal and we'll do this. We'll, we'll do hamsters again in a little bit. Give me a, give me a breather here. Let's, let's, give me a breather here. We'll come back to that, I promise. I promise we'll get back into that. Let me head back over here. Let's show off Tag Zap just a little bit more. Um, do I have Musky Buffalo voice mod too? Uh, no. Um, yes, the .NET LL Cool J hat wearing, that's uh, me. It, it is a cool hat, don't get me wrong. And it's, it does have kind of a, a galactic background there. Um, okay, so we know that, that moderation does turn off blocking also. So you can't, if you turn off moderation, you can't block users. Uh, we need to restart. So, did I know LL Cool J stands for Ladies Love Cool James? Is that what it is? I thought it was something else. So there's moderation and blocked users. Being able to, and yes, C-Sharp Fritz is blocked. There's something to be said then about being able to turn on and off moderation while the application is running. And there's a whole level of things there. It is Ladies Love Cool James. I thought... I stand corrected then. All right. Yeah, I thought I, I must have seen something something else that was wrong, and and it was back in the day that I saw. So, uh, did you see him on Hot Ones? Oh, now you oh. and knowing is half the battle. That's not Fairy Wings hat. Fairy Wings hat is is in the box over there somewhere. Um, moving on. Um, so the question is, when we're in moderation, so I, I love how. For moderation, it's so simple, but what do we add for a third button down here to kind of do that more interaction? So, chat, help me out. Let's go over to the bootstrap icon font. Let's choose a a, a button that we'll add in here. I don't... I, I hear you with the ellipsis, but I don't think that that's going to be enough. It's going to be too simple and hard to make sure that you exactly get your finger... Uh, uh, don't be lewd, Fritz. It's going to exactly press. Um, some sort of a more button to do more actions, right? So, it's not a basket. It's not a battery or a bell. 
bell might be interesting to have some sort of notification pop up. Hmm. But um, a box, an open box. I don't know. Boxes, mm, maybe. Book, the book. Where's the book? Was there a book up here? Bookmark. Um, that's not bad. Have a good one, Johan. Thank you so much. Our friend Johan contributed a little bit of code here. Hamburger menu might be a little bit too much. Three dots, I feel like, is too simple for, for this. Carrot down. Somebody was saying Chevron earlier. That's not bad. Right, if we do the carrot down with the fill, what do you think of that one? So... And the idea here is when you mouse over one of these, and we're already kind of kind of squished for space here, right? We want to add a third button so that and and to folks who are just joining who aren't familiar with Tags app, when you when you're looking at this, right, we're promoting messages to be shared that that can be used also as as a lower third here, right? So. So if we grab this message from our friend Ellie face, it shows up and we can embed this in OBS or a TriCaster as a lower third. And when we moderate and put, we have our team of moderators that are reviewing content, right? And it's not just coming from Twitch, right? It's also coming from Mastodon and Twitter. If we put a third button there, the AI drama, oh, it very much had a tie to Twitch with Emmett. And I think I think Emmett got paid very well for his, what, two days of work as the interim CEO. And Sam did go back to open AI. Um, and all of all of that drama by the board of, of open AI, and all they did was fire themselves. <laughs> In the end, all they did was fire themselves. Yeah, 72 hours. Done. I, in retrospect, I don't think Emmett would have been a very good long-term CEO for OpenAI. I, I, I appreciate finding an, an experienced CEO to try and bring some organization as a short-term interim. I appreciate trying to do that and recognizing that he had some expertise at that. Long-term, he would not have been a good choice. So, yeah. Um, so the the idea is there's additional actions besides accepting and rejecting content here, right? So we accepted that content, and it it come on, turn off the pause. It should appear. I have to repause because I opened up. So it appears automatically there, um, and I can click into it and see that content. But that moderation, clearly there's another step. There's other options to do there. Yeah, we don't know what his long-term role would have been. So the idea is let's add a third button that opens up a do more dialogue, right? A modal on this UI that says, okay, what else would you like to do? You know, um, gosh, Surly Dev here, we're going to do more here. We're going to reject and block surly dev right maybe um maybe uh, uh here here's low quality plays right maybe we're going to say you know what mute the word hamburger and messages that come in that have the word hamburger will automatically be rejected they don't even have a chance to go through because they have the word hamburger in it right things like that that for a moderator, folks want to be able to do, and we saw from that other message, th that other bit of feedback. Um, hey, uh, I gotta get you scalp there. Um, hey, I wanna be able to reply to this tweet, this Mastodon toot. Put me right into Twitch chat in reply mode for this message from low quality plays here. Those types of options, for a moderator to be able to do, right? To kind of funnel and get messages into a queue for an event, for a streamer. Huge help there. 
That emote has as an icon for more. Yeah, that a hamburger. I, I see what you're doing there. So I, what do you think of the chevron down to kind of, and and have it pop open a more window? Let's look and see if there's anything else here. Chat dot. Uh, that feels like a good icon when we do the respond to this message. Um, these chevrons, I think, are too small. They're too thin for the interaction. Is there a nice trunk or a chest icon? Hmm. A treasure chest icon. Is there... Uh, no. Uh, not treasure. Um, a trunk... That's a truck. Didn't spell it right. Uh, no. Um, there's threads icons. That's new. That's new. Tags. <clears throat> That's interesting. Suitcase. I like the Chevron down. You know? Um, let me go with that. The direction signs are kind of fun. They're kind of fun. Um, the shields are interesting. So, and, and to Imperial and some of the other folks that are coming in, right, we're, we're not trying to replace Twitch chat, but we're trying to give nice user interface so that you can integrate not just with Twitch chat, but with Twitter, Mastodon, and these other services, eventually Discord, and be able to bring in content and have rich interactions from those places with one user interface on screen, right? So... If we, if we go back over here and we look at the waterfall, we see messages that came in from Mastodon that end up looking really nice on screen because they've got an attached image. We also want to get videos playing in there also. So when someone shares a video or a photo in Discord or on Mastodon or Twitter in these places where we want additional content, for us as streamers or folks that are running an event, be able to play those immediately. Be able to have that interaction quickly and easily. Moderation is a thing, though, here that we're going to wrap up and we're going to start trying to bundle and make this much, much more configurable for folks. So you can deploy your own instance or we run a managed instance for people to be able to connect and use. Serge uh, asks, do you want a new page with a full moderation options or just a smaller added piece with the limited added actions? So I think where Serge is going is when we choose this third button that says do more with this message, do we, do we pop a little modal dialogue that says, here's your options? Or do we route to another screen, full screen that says, for this message that you've selected, what do you want to do with it? For now, I like the idea of a modal. A sword icon. Surly Dev, I like that. Is There's no S word, there's no sword. Icon? Really? Oh, man. How about, like, no, there's Moons, Microsoft, Microphone, Music Notes, Mices, Nintendo Switch. Mm. Um, so, yeah, th there's a whole collection of... Well, some of these might be interesting with the journal. Somebody was mentioning about a book earlier. Steal it from Twitch. <laughs> yeah, they stole Clip Talk from me. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> I feel like we've been kind of bouncing around here. Pencil might be something. Hmm. Um, handbag, hammer, 
Uh, maybe. Not a gift. Gift, I think, might be something interesting to try. Hammer next to when we say block user. I like that, Surge. I like that for the block user. When we get into... Is the yin and yang down there? I, I would be concerned about a little bit of culture sensitivity there using that. Animate the hammer coming down. <laughs> a view button that if the mod clicks the message, it opens, but with options to the side. Okay, low quality play, you have me intrigued. Okay, and then that makes it a little bit easier to extend that, and we're not we're not trying to stuff everything into the one user interface. Okay. Okay. You have my attention. Um I think Valentine's not gonna work. What if we go back to that journal? Right? Um, with journal with text. What if we use that as a way to write, as an indicator to, and I really like what low quality plays is saying here, that let's open with the message on the side, displayed the way that it is, and with a series of additional options. And as we add more additional actions that you could take, it doesn't just preview low quality plays, but it also gives you those th that menu of other things. Um, Surly Dev is suggesting menu app. Um, I think the journal shows it a little bit nicer, to be honest, with the text. I don't know. What do you think? I, th I, I like the journal text. Can I see some ones in chat if you like the journal text? And an F if you don't? Three dots are at a hamburger are too small to put on here, and they're going to be out of place kind of appearing in the middle. Imperial likes the journal text. No? A one without the three round things. Oh, without the stuff on the side. So I think there was like a note like that, wasn't there? So we've got journal text. There might have been like a note. Right? A notepad with something like that. Um, that's close. Ooh, look at all that stuff. All the files. Um, and it, crumbs. Friends, you're, that's, that's the source code I was writing. Here's the... Uh, Dragon Sun likes, the, likes it as well. A cog. Oh, gosh. I hadn't thought about a cog. That's, that's a good one, too. Um, is it cog or is it gear? It might be gear in their language. There we go. What do you think of the gear? The gear might be might be a little bit more intentional there. Gear goes into is a settings visual cue at this point. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um Musical note stuff. Yeah, we're into notes. I want to write. I, I want to find like not newspaper. Envelope. No, not paperclip either. But the the journal. I like journal text. I think. Let me start with that. Uh, the wrench Surly Dev is linking. Developers, 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 developers. 
Adrill99, thank you for the follow. So, of the wrenches, I think I like this one best. The filled in one looks a little bit too busy for me. Um, book half. This one. I could go there. No, it's not a gift. Hey, Adriel, you like Dynamics 365? Well, welcome. First one, but one, but one the other direction. What? What? Okay, so I've got journal text, book half, the gear. Let me start a poll. I want to get, I, I want to choose one that we like. Let me start a quick poll. Start a poll, start a poll. New poll. Which icon for the more actions? Uh, moderation tool. So we have um, book half, gear, journal text, uh, and a wrench. I'll give you three minutes to vote there. There you go. So if you're on Twitch, you can click through and vote on that. It's right at the top of chat. It's right over there. Let me know. I want to take. I want to get your opinion for what icon we're going to put in here, and we'll click and have it open a new window, and we'll start off with block user as the first action that we'll add in here. We'll add other things like mute words. So it, you it, you may have seen this before. Can you see them one more time? Sure. So there's book half. Um, I'll scroll down here. There's uh, the gear is just go right to it, Fritz. Um, there's the gear that we would use. Um, journal text is this one. And the last one was one of the wrenches. So we've got several wrenches here. This was the one that was suggested. I, I like this one here. Dots, uh, dots are going to be too simple on that user interface because we've already got th two other options on there. So... The book half we like. So, one it, it, the reason I bring up the mute option is, so one thing that we that we see and you you see this all the time on TikTok, folks were trying to hijack the hashtag on Twitter for .NET Conf last week. So, not only did .NET Conf get DDoS attacked, but there were a bunch of OnlyFans influencers that were trying to that were trying to advertise their OnlyFans page on .NET Conf, and they started posting their messages with the .NET Conf hashtag. There's a level of trending there that I appreciate we reached that OnlyFans influencers wanted to do that. No, you can't vote for the Netscape Navigator icon. So, yeah, I, I, we didn't want to put those those OnlyFans influencers up on Tag Zap. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so we've got just a few seconds left here as we're wrapping up. A lot of good choices there. <clears throat> Love the discussion here on, on the options. You like the .NET keyed services, Bite Lordy? Oh, glad you enjoy that. Um, right... Some scantily uh, clad models wanting to promote to geeks. Who knew? Who would who who would do that? <laughs> Look, it, thank you, Gebs. I appreciate the follow. Look, I have no problem with these folks wanting to promote themselves. It's out of context for our event. We have a tie in the voting. Um between the gear and the journal text. All right. Not a tie. Yeah, that's right. We're going to have a we have a tie. So, you know what? We're going to run the poll and we're going to do this in speed mode. Um which icon for the more actions button? And the options were uh journal text 
and the gear. And I am going to give you one minute to vote, to break the tie. Which way is it going to go? Let me know. Drop a vote there at the top of chat on Twitch. Sorry, friends on YouTube, but this is a Twitch-only feature. Um, yes, OnlyFans influencers at a Microsoft event. So, Stelzy, when I went to my first Microsoft Tech Ed in 2008 in Orlando, <coughs> there were some there were some working ladies who bought tickets at the door and came in and were walking around the uh, sponsor floor ha handing out pamphlets soliciting their wares. That was interesting to see. Like, really? <laughs> really? That's that's bold. I appreciate the the the, the gumption, the, the effort to get out there and and show what you show what you've got. Um not entirely welcomed among the uh the entire audience there. The journal text wins. The 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 vote off there. So I will use this icon as the third one. Um, Gebs asks, what do I think about Maui not supporting Linux? Um, so here's the deal. Right, let me... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um... So let's put that up there. What do I think about Maui not supporting? And we're going to replace this eventually with TagZap running here. We'll move off of feature chat and use TagZap. Um, I think it's just fine because, quite frankly, the folks who say, hey, I want to be able to support Linux with this, they don't have a significant investment in Linux that are actually trying to do this. They're literally looking for it as a checkbox. They're not looking to pay for this service. They're not looking to professionally do this and land a whole bunch of content over there. Quite frankly, if they want the application to run everywhere, they build a web app. Um, so I, I get that there are folks that are vocal about getting it, getting .NET MAUI native apps running on Linux. The amount of effort involved to make that happen when two orders of magnitude less, dot, uh, less users want that on Linux than on iOS or Android for a .NET MAUI team that's already stretched thin, if the community can contribute and make that happen, and the community has shown that they don't have an appetite to contribute and make that happen, it's not going to happen right now. And I'm okay with that, because it's literally being driven by, here's what Microsoft is going to pay to build. And let's remember, when Microsoft decides to build features for .NET, it's a several million dollar investment. Engineers, product managers, release engineers, the people that build the .NET, the, the Visual Studio 2022 features, the Visual Studio Code features, they all need to get paid to build those features. It's a several million dollar investment. That Maui team building features for four different platforms is a very expensive team and they want to get those first four platforms right before they get onto Linux. So, um, so, uh, Junie Von Esch says, new idea, code, it, it, it only code, adult coding 24-7. Adult meaning so serious, dark winged duck is questioning. Welcome back to Only Code. I'm your host tonight, C Sharp Fritz. After dark. Welcome back. Uh, let's see what we can write here. He <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> um, I, clearly, those folks have services they're trying to advertise. Totally, it's not welcome in all venues. Is all. That's okay. Some venues they are. Some venues they aren't. And when I'm trying to offer whether it, me as an event manager or me as a live streamer and I'm trying to be inclusive of folks of all walks of life those folks are welcome that content is not It's and, and that's just so we can be inclusive of everybody um, 
welcoming to everybody. That's all. And look, there are other places where it is welcome. So, um, tonight we continue uh, debugging using a less than helpful exception message. True. Funny how none of the other platforms, Kotlin, uh, Flutter, Kotlin, Java, don't have the same issue. They do. They do. Do you have any idea how much of an investment it is to get things running on those other platforms? They do. That's why it takes a long time for new features to come to those platforms. And to be clear, the Flutter team just departed Google and went to Apple. Trust me, there's, they're not saying it, but they do. They're managing their investment. Flutter is built by Google. The reason they need it working on Linux is because that's what Chromium OS is. So they're building and investing on stuff to work on, on there because they're giving away that operating system and they need it to work. The folks, the, the leadership of the Flutter team left Google and went to Apple. Yes. That happened a few weeks ago. Yes. And they're quite vocal on Twitter that they are not happy with Google. Quite vocal. Don't talk to me about Java and investment. Oracle has invested very little in Java since they took stewardship from Sun. And quite frankly, Oracle has invested more in lawyers suing people about how they're using Java than actually building Java. They're, Oracle is living off of the community contributing things to that. Kotlin is a property, is, is, a, um, is an offshoot of JetBrains, and JetBrains sells tools. They... They need Kotlin working so they can make Rider work on every platform. They're investing in building that programming language and making it work on every platform because they need to sell Rider. So, like, all of these platforms, all of these things that .NET works with are open source. And there's only so much that Microsoft can spend to build for those platforms. You don't use Kotlin to build websites. You don't use Flutter to build websites. Microsoft is building .NET to support Bing and Xbox and Windows. All, and, and uh, all the Office apps. Developers, so developers, when we think about that, developers, developers, developers. the answer for getting those apps working that Microsoft has for getting them working on Linux is wrap them into an Electron-based app right now. So, there's there's no push or need for Microsoft to get it working over there because they've got their model to push things over and work in that platform. And that's okay. Folks are happy with that. So, um... You love both C Sharp and Flutter, but actually you can develop websites. You you can, but are people really developing websites with Flutter? I mean, honestly. So, um, digging back in here. No, it's not made primarily for it. Flutter's, pr Flutter's primarily built for building native applications. Very good question, Cheermonger. Given Google's support lifecycle, can we be sure that it's available? Yes, you, you can develop them with Kotlin, but once again, is that a primary feature of that? Um, and this strikes me as... as counter to what we've been doing for the last 30 years of web development. That's right. Web development's been around for 30 years. You build with HTML and CSS. 
my friend Scott Hanselman used to say, if you want to be a, a developer, learn JavaScript and another language. I'm going to disagree with him and say, if you want to be a developer, learn HTML because everybody uses HTML. Everybody. That is a fantastic. I, yes. Um, uh, Not that one. Play again. Exhausted from falling for Google features and them... They, Google ju doesn't just deprecate a feature. It disappears in a month. <laughs> gone. Like, Google Hangouts. <laughs> gone. Now it's Google Meet, really. Because they wanted their own team's competitor, really. Their own team's Slack competitor, really. So... Yeah, I first learned HTML in the 90s as well, Imperial. Yeah, right? Like, it's easy to learn. And it's something that I think folks can pick up. Gebs, I won't go quite that far. I won't go quite that far. I'm, I don't enjoy JavaScript either, but I deal with it. As Blazor becomes more full-featured, I'm on board. I'm way on board. Sorry, Chris Funk. Yeah. HTML's not going anywhere. Totally agree. And quite frankly, when I when I run into folks who were some of the original leads on WPF and building with XAML, I'm like, why didn't why didn't we do this with HTML? I mean, really. Hey there, lanky Scottish nerd. Nice Thank you. Nerd just resubscribed for two months. Prime sub, but a sub is a sub smile. It is. Thank you so much for bringing that Prime sub. Using you've already get got the free shipping. You've got the the free movies and, and music on Amazon. If you bring that Prime subscription here, as always, I'm going to make a donation to the American Cancer Society in memory of those those members of our community, including one of our first, um, including one of our first subscribers, Brave Cobra, that we lost to cancer back in July, and Vittorio that we lost in in the fall. And the folks, I know there's folks that are watching here today that are fighting the fight against cancer. I have a family member that was just diagnosed with cancer last week. We're going to make donations to the American Cancer Society. And for every donation, Microsoft will match. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Imperial. That is very kind. Imperial just resubscribed for 12 months. Thank American you. American Cancer Society less than three. Yeah, right? It's easy. It, it's, it's so cool to support that. And uh, we've we've sent over a couple thousand dollars here since July when we started this, donating all of the cheers, subscriptions and bit and advertising revenue um, to the American Cancer Society. Microsoft is matched. We've done we've we've done very well for them. Um, when we get into the new year, we're going to pivot and go to another uh, another online charity. We'll we'll figure out who we support for the first half of 2024. Thank you, uh, Cheermonger. Yeah, the Clip Talk streams were a lot of fun. We're going to publish the source code to Clip Talk um, in December. So, um, appreciate that. Couldn't imagine using your Prime sub anywhere else. Uh, thank you, lanky Scottish nerd. That is very kind there. I'm going to check mark that one. So, yeah. Um, the buzz trend is HTMX, right? So, look, any of those trendy frameworks, until they make it at least two years... I don't trust them coming on the scene. And be, hey, look, everybody use this. Wee, look at how great it is. Okay, where's the support behind that? Where's, where's, the, how's that going to carry for the next, the next two, three years? As a developer, I want to bet on a framework that's going to be around for at least five years because I don't want to rewrite it in two years. Clip Talk is dead. Yes, Evil Jaws. We had to take it offline. Twitch released a competing feature, and quite frankly, the minimal number of the, the 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 number of folks that we had viewing, interacting with Clip Talk, even though we had vastly, vastly superior features, you can't compete with the the data load and APIs that Twitch was using themselves to build a similar feature. So yes, it's offline, it's gone. So gone but not forgotten. We learned so much from it. We'll have post, a post-mortem right up on the blog and source code that we'll share. I did. I worked three years on it. I went through four different databases, a bunch of different APIs. These things happen. I'm, I, I wish, right? 
I, I was hopeful. I extended olive branches to the folks at Twitch. Hey, can we work together and do something with this? Instead of collaborating, they decided to build their own thing that did very similar features. And look, there are other folks that stood up websites that did the portrait mode formatting and automatic loading of clips to TikTok. Those folks got wiped out a couple more, a couple months before me. That's it is what it is. These these are the challenges of building and integrating with other services. That's why TagZap integrates with everything. We're going to build an imager search so that when folks post messages with a hashtag on imager, they appear here. We're going to build a Reddit integration so you can watch topics in a subreddit and they appear in this. We're going to build reports. We're going to build graphs. We're going to build all kinds of interactions here so that streamers and folks that are running events can literally use Tags app as their dashboard to integrate with the world. Because just like I said about this channel, where I want everybody to feel welcome, when I want everybody to be included and interacting in what we're doing together for an event like .NET Conf, a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society, St. Jude Month coming up in April, I want wherever you are, I want you to be able to participate, get your messages in here, get interactions happening, and, and do something cool and interactive with our entire community, not just the people that are watching us on Twitch, on YouTube. I want everybody to be able to get in and have fun. We even floated the idea of being able to receive messages from text message and have them appear up here. Cool. Um, I've showed what can be done with Blazor Skylex. You're right. We're going to take this and adapt this for Blazor also. And I've got some ideas for a Maui app as well. We're taking over the world, says Surge. <laughs> Maybe. Is Tags app hosted anywhere yet? Not yet. And that's something that I want to do so that we can stand up and when some of our streamer friends want to use this type of overlay search interaction technology, I want some of our friends who, who are streamers that want to try this to be able to jump in and say, hey, listen to, listen to my channel, connect to my Discord, and so forth, and get all the content appearing in one place. We're getting there. It's, it's a, it's a to-do item here. Configuration, I think, is a piece that we're going to finish when we get done with some of these block capabilities, and we'll do more with that. Lanky Scottish nerd here. I love that. Inclusion is key. Everybody should feel welcome. I don't, I don't care what country you're watching from. I don't care what language you speak. I, I don't care what walk of life you are. I don't care what your faith is. I don't care what your skin color is. You're welcome to join us here and learn and talk about software and have a good time together, telling jokes and, and having a good time. We just asked, write those couple rules, no political talk, no ages chatter, no swearing aloud, no, no non -safe, not safe for work talk. Pretty easy. And we all feel like we're having a good time learning and talking together. I really appreciate the chat today is great. Thank you. Um, does .NET have a middleware platform similar to Java? Yes, it does. Yes, Gebs, it does. So tell you what, I can even show you. We've got middleware here inside Tags app. Take a look at the source code. It's linked right there at the top of chat. Um, but when you build, so here, this is my program. This is what you would typically use to start up a, a node application. We have similar structure now in .NET. And so we, we configure all of our services up here in our builder. Builder services configure these things, add security, add identity capabilities. And when I scroll down here a little bit further, it, after it's done adding all of the services here, it, it says, okay, well, here's the app, build it. Put all those services together, give me my app. And now it configures all the middleware to go with it. And I can inject then other layers of things to work with it. So I've got all my configuration here that we can do. So yes, 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 Gebs, we do have that. We can talk more about that in the future. WhatsApp would be a cool option for international developers, folks, developers, developers, suggests Chris developers, Funk. Developers, developers, developers. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. 
Drinking Tea. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, where'd that go? Uh, where'd it go? See, this is... I, I, I almost need a find option here to be able to go back and find. So there was that. Middleware. Yeah, there we go. WhatsApp. Um, it's on the list. I think we can reach out to some of our Twilio developer relations friends. And maybe there's a collaboration there where we work with some of them to build integrations because they have a WhatsApp service and they also have text messaging services. So maybe there's an opportunity there to allow folks to send in messages with those two platforms. Greenish Pepper asks, what is TagZap built with so far? Right here. Did I start with the back end or the front end? Yes. It's built with .NET 8. Um, C Sharp, JavaScript. We'll advance and move this around. The source code is available. I, I encourage you, click and download. We've built this over the past three months here on stream. We sent messages out to Microsoft executives saying, hey, look what we built, TagZap, as an open source application. And it really helped with this event. Is LinkedIn on the tags role? It's not. There's some things you have to do to get LinkedIn working. Um, you need to be a business. You need to, it's the same thing with threads and Instagram. I know we've got a number of folks here who are even verified on Instagram and threads that really like those platforms. Um, LinkedIn requires you to be a business and pass through several verifications to get there. A little bit trickier to get set up, and it's not something that I think the average streamer is going to be able to do. On the other side, um, Instagram and threads, because of the processes that Meta went through and, and the investigations they went through internationally with various organizations and countries investigating how their content was used and abused, there is a very, very difficult process to go through to be able to access the APIs, to be able to search Instagram, threads, and Facebook. And it, like, you have to not just prove that you're a business, but you need to send them their your documentation, your government registered documentation about your business before they'll approve and give you access to the APIs. It is awful to go through because I started going through it because I wanted to get Instagram and threads on here. And it's just not worth the time. That alone, I think, as a third-party developer, is going to hinder the development of those platforms. Continuing here, um, let me see here. Do I still prefer program main style? No, I like the top-level statements better. I like top-level statements better because the program main style in, in older, and this is a C-sharp question here, um, didn't add any value, you know? So top-level statements makes it very clear to me, here's how things are built. What architecture pattern am I using? I uh, had to create a solution using a modular monolith. Um, so I have background services that run that host the various interactions with the services. I use um, repository patterns throughout my code. Um, so there's no specific architecture that I do. Lanky Scottish nerd. This is very kind. Is MEF still a thing? No, it's not. Um, sorry, it's not. Um, this question, comment from Lanky Scottish nerd. I'm a master at what I do here. I'll give you that. I've not seen anyone do this quite like I do in the scale you do it. Thank you. That's very kind. We've only got a hundred folks here, so it's a little bit easier to talk to and, and address folks. What I do to help charities and communities, unbelievable. 70 year old mother now even enjoys listening. Thank you. So, um, I, I do know, I, I, and I, I'm, I do know there are folks who like listening to my voice because they like listening to my voice, even though they might not fully understand what I'm working on, but folks like, folks like your mother and, and, and that may have questions and want to, and, and Hey, well, why are you building that? Even if it's not specifics all the way down into the language, there are some folks with some, some very very tech forward questions like um, what architecture pattern do I use um, right there was a question about the program main style very tech focused but other questions about the application that I'm building and, and different things that we do there I even if you aren't as in the tech speak 
as some of us, that's okay. When I do ask questions about user interface and moving things around, I do want to hear from you. Let's talk. That's These are the places where I want to make sure that you feel welcome to raise your voice and tell us how things feel and look and what you think about the application because I want you to feel a part of this community, even if you aren't in on those low-level tech questions. All right, friends? So, yeah. Yeah, some of the visual... Well, the Visual Studio extensions are are built with .NET Framework. Some of the simple questions pulls us back out to the simple que solutions. Yes, that's very good. Dumb questions don't exist here. True, true. Look, we had our, our friend Juni Von Esch here. She's, she's very been very clear that she's not a very technical person. But she has asked questions and pointed things out as we've been building Tags app that were helpful as we thought about the evolution of the app. And that's, that's what I think is beautiful about building an app like this. I'm about to go dive in and add that journal text button here. And we're going to see a little bit of JavaScript and work around that code and talk about it. But when I put it on screen and we talk about the interaction, some of the folks who aren't as knowledgeable about the JavaScript are going to have good feedback for us at that point that we'll talk through and address and see how it fits in here. So I like that, right? That there are other folks that do tech streams and learning streams here. And I think to, to the point earlier here from lanky Scottish nerd um, to that point, I want everybody to feel a part of this. Even if it means I have to slow down and speed up at times. So let's go in and, and, and let's add that that tech journal text icon and start wiring that up. And I like the suggestion of have it pop a new screen. Um, oh, Xerxes. Let's, let's talk about that one. Let's talk about that one. We're already there with, with content safety. Right, I don't have it. I don't have content safety turned on right now. Um, tell you what, let me turn it on because I do have it here. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, I will turn that on. Um, and I don't want it running in Visual Studio right now. Hang on, stop that. Stop that. I'm going to turn back on Azure Content Safety because I think, and and I know we have some some streamer friends here. Um, let me turn this back on with Azure Content Safety. I think you're on to something else there, Xerxes. Let me come back to those other two items. But I do have Azure Content Safety here available. Did it finish loading? It's not done loading yet. Du, 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 du. There it goes. So let me come back to this screen, right? Let me let it reload. You make me sad. It's on this one, and uh, no, I'm on 5038. So if I open moderation here, right? Um, and if I say something like, I hate all of this nonsense, get on with the stuff, right? Azure Content Safety sees, sees that. Oh, I'm already on block, so it didn't even get there. Hang on, I'm blocked. Hang on, turn that off. Um, so right there, there we go, right there. So here, pause that. We're on pause. Um, see that message there from Surge and it's got the little cloud above it? It's rejected because there's a because the artificial intelligence risk rejected it. The little blue cloud that you see there, and it and kill the cat was detected as hateful, as violent, a low level bit of violence, but it was rejected because of that for coming through. This is important for us because right things like that that folks are sending through, we don't want to even consider bringing in. So 
I can turn over and say, just show me the content that needs review. If, if it's been rejected somewhere else, I don't even want to see. Or we could say, you know what, let's take a look at the stuff that was rejected. And we can turn on and let some things through. Now, you see, we even tested with this message about Hamas last week. And that was rejected automatically because we want to make sure that that content it, it wasn't welcome in that space that we were going to so to be able to reject and and bring that in fine so but we can turn on and say well yes we want to approve that are you sure this was previously rejected are you sure and we can allow that through appropriately. So m2dev.net, would it would it hit for kill the app? No, it did not. It knows the context and did not flag that, right? That's pretty good. That's artificial intelligence helping with those rejections. And it's and I know that when we talk about artificial intelligence getting in and reading and making decisions about things, we don't want to let it just have full control right? I had a very good discussion with Imperial about this type of interaction. By having it put it into a rejected moderation state with a reason why, so that even though a moderator has to turn this on and say, yes, enable this, right? It be, has to put anything live. It reduces the amount of, of work that those moderators need to do. And if there is a false positive, we have the opportunity to still push something live. And you see there, it's rejecting some of those test messages that you're putting through. I like that, right? These, these are things that make it easier for us to work with it. Now, are there other comprehensive things that we may want to do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't want to disclose them just now. But yes, there's a, there's a lot of really cool things that we want to add in here. I'm not going to disclose all of them just yet. But yeah, we're, we're going to do some cool things here. So, all right. Let's finish putting in this, this, uh, a, this API, this, not API, this interaction for them. Thank you, Dflux. Um, attend a, a .NET Conf local event near you. So, yes, Xerxes. So, um, where was I? So, in, in it's not in Site.js, it's in the moderation screen. There are, there, see, there's the, the check. No, wait a sec, that's the providers. Hang on, where's the moderation panel? Mm, there it is, moderation actions. So, there's the overlay so we're going to add one. you're welcome Xerxes have a good one um, what about translating into English doable doable not a priority do me a favor, open an issue on the repository. Click that link at the top of Twitch chat. Let's open an issue and talk about that. Um, that's GitHub Copilot suggesting that. That's not exactly what I want. Um, come on now, give me, thank you. More actions is the title I'll put on this. Um, I don't know. I'm going to put call this more and where'd it go? Did I accidentally close? I think I did. What was it? The bootstrap icons? I forget what it was over here and uh, journal text. This one, it is BI journal text. So let's put that in right there. Okay. 
So back over here to my moderation screen. So now I've got three buttons side by side by side like that. And that feels like we're trying to squeeze too many things in there. Doesn't it? Because we're putting reject right in the middle. I'd rather have these two next to each other and this one kind of down below in the middle. Know what I mean? So let's do a little bit of CSS here. Shall we? Uh, moderation action. Display flex, flex direction, row, justify content center, align items. Um, so row means it's going to go across, but I really want this to be grid, I think. Could also auto-reject all non-allowed languages. I could see that being an option, DGen1, yes. Let's open an issue and, and discuss that in the future. I could see that being an option that folks would want to configure. Sure. Um, I could see folks saying, you know what, this is a Canadian broadcast where English and French are the two languages, official languages, so only allow English and French to, to be um, sent through. This is a broadcast in Texas for Texas state event XYZ. So let's allow English and Spanish through. Stuff like that. Yeah, I could see that as an option. Um, this is a broadcast from Fritz, and he's an idiot who only understands English. So only English is allowed. Yeah, we could do that too. <laughs> uh, do I think it's better to make a web app with Razor or user framework like React, Angular on the front end, or is there there's a use case for both? There's a use case for both. Um, I think for most folks, React and Angular is too much. For most folks. Me? I'll understand American English? Marcus? Go on, tell me more. <laughs> I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, so here. So, text align center, and it's just going to put them side by side, and that's how I have them as three. I think I want to make this display grid. And I want to say grid auto columns. Right? Um, template columns. There we go. Yep. Yep. Two rows, two columns. Um, I'm not going to make this with 50%. I think I want to make this 100% now. So it should bump the third one now into the next row down. There we go. Yeah. But that third one, I want to make span the columns. So what if I do... What if I do... Moderation action. No. Uh, no. Um, go back over to our page. And it was called uh, more. Right? So I could do this, right? <sighs> Are you kidding? No. Um, I want it on a grid column. Yes, I want it on two. So that it's the lower one. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. That one, it works. Right? Like, okay, I've got plenty of space there between them, but on these smaller ones, ah. This, this stream could also be, be held in German. Uh... Yeah, ich spreche Deutsch. Don't don't get Juni started. Juni is very fluent in German. Oh, du meine Gute. Um, so, uh, and that that's about as much German as I remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I could get back into it, but mm, 
Small fingers. <laughs> um, there we go. Oh, yes. Beer pit is a good phrase to remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we want to make the rows. I think we made the rows just a little bit too big here. I think we want to go. Can we make this like 0 0.5? Can we do that? Um, uh, not quite. It's still too big on these smaller ones. Um, but on the larger ones, that see that's that's a that's great. That size fits really nicely. That's not too bad either over here on the stream island ones. One that's a little bit, just a little bit too big. So I need to figure out. Tell you what, let's let's keep things paused. Let's bring open the uh, designer here. Um, in line with smaller icons. Well, I want it to kind of stretch itself. You know what I mean? Um, I want to turn on that hover. Right? Hover on this drawing. No, this one. Hover. Do it. Um... Right, and it's kind of, it's making it disappear there. I don't want to make the message get larger when I hover because I also have a touch on here for touch screens and it makes it bigger. Um, what, Azure is not hard, trust me. Folks that have been using AWS and change over to Azure are like, this should be a lot harder, what, what's going on? And folks who go from Azure to AWS go, why is this so hard? There is the, the portal usability between Azure and AWS. The, there is a clear usability winner there that I think you'll hear from folks that use both. Uh, yeah, you do wonder about me at times. Well, what can I say? What can I tell you? Um, how am I going to test that? How do I make it? The columns clearly work. Can I, can I make this? Can I make this 50% each? Like, I thought that's what the FR did, but that's, that's pretty darn close. And if I make, if I take that down just a smidge, just to be safe, refresh. What do you think? So now we have a more button that we can click that'll take us out somewhere else. What do you think, chat? Yeah, Zerus, you were right. Make the icons just a little bit smaller. But I think we're still at, at a, good, a good size that your finger won't accidentally press one or the other. Um, yeah. So if I go back to my JavaScript over here, where, where is it? Um, approve. Yeah. Here, where is this thing called? Thank you. Uh, no. Oh, come on. Right? The, where's the click to approve? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
because it's it's wired up to these things. There we go. Add the event listener for the reject button. Um, and there should be another one here for approve. There's the approve. So we want to add another one for um, it's not bad. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Um, all right, we're good there. Um, so we need to hook up the more to open it. I want to open on a new tab and take you to that other place. So let's go back over here. And we're going to do something right. It's going to be I, I dot more click. We're not going to connection invoke anything. We are going to remove the panel. Uh, navigator dot. Uh, what is it? Navigator dot. I want to open a new. Right. I want to open a new. Uh, No, I don't want to open the clipboard. What the heck? What is it to navigate to a new page with JavaScript in a new tab? Navigate to the more to, uh, to the uh, message details page for this mes message in a yeah in a new tab. Go ahead, tell me how to do that, uh, Copilot. Man, that's good. Window open message details, the data provider ID on a blank. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So now I need to add a message details page, but. What do I think of the Starship launch? The one last week? Awful. <laughs> it blew up. Eh. So, it should. There it is. It's trying to go to message details. Twitch slash that. That's not bad. Let's actually make this instead of slash. What can we put as kind of the provider delimiter between them? Uh, instead of a slash, what could it be? What could it be? I was actually thinking vertical pipe. I was thinking vertical pipe. What do you, how, Adril, that kind of jives, right? It's, it, it, it kind of fits in and isn't, isn't going to, without actually explicitly adding a new item there, right? So if I do that, so it goes to Twitch pipe, and then I can split on that and go get it. <laughs> Rapid unscheduled disassembly. Yeah. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, so I think that, I think that works. Never tried Copilot? Oh, it's so good. I don't want to do URL parameters because then it it, it gets, gets a little bit messy, right? Versus it's the one argument there I can pull it down and, and rip it apart. I don't know. That's just me. So if I add a... Me so now we have a way to get through to a message details page. And a message details page feels like it needs to be a moderator-only feature, Right? 
So if I go down into... So folks were asking about some of the ways to... How do you build things here? Let's add a new page for message details. Let me show you how this works in Visual Studio. So I'm adding a new... These are called Razor Pages because it's got a mix-up of C-sharp and HTML using a templating language we call Razor. But you'll see how this fits together. It's kind of nice. Um, and we'll call this message details that opens up and just like I had in my moderation page here it has a model it takes a, a layout and we pass some eh, let's put in a title for this also and I'll call this um, message details and um, Add in, add information about the selected message, and we'll figure out what that looks like. Stop. Sure. Let's have some fun with GitHub Copilot. Create two columns. One that is four columns wide that contains the formatted message, comma. And the right side of the screen should then contain all of the actions that we can take on the message. It's like GitHub Copilot. Do its thing. You're about to get a serious beatdown. You can do it. I love it when a plan comes together. That's Copilot. That's Copilot. Now, it, it didn't finish closing up all the things here. That's okay. But that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. We've got some work to do around this. But man, that's really good that Copilot generated all that for us. Let's go to the page model behind the scenes. We need to get, we need to uh, uh, bring in, right? If we look at moderation, we need to bring in our moderation repository because our moderation repository has the ability to, no, maybe that's not the one we want. Um, maybe we want both. And we might want the messaging service. We don't need the providers. Let's see what we get here. Let's, let's just start slinging code and see what happens here. Oh man. Um, there's, I, what's the other repository that I have here? No. Um, is it in the messaging service? I'm going to get content. Yeah. By IDs. There we go. Cause I'm going to get a specific message and bring it back. So I guess I only need those two. Cool. Okay. So here, let's uh, put some fields out here for these. So I've got some fields for that. And when we get content, right? Um, I think we're going to have, um, we're gonna have a provider, actually, no, no. We're going to have a content object that comes back. Let's 
just call this message. Yeah. Okay. Uh, string message ID. Let's just call this ID. Right? Because it should model bind to that. Oh, no, wait. Right? Public string ID. It should get that, right? Do I have that right? I think it I think it does. So when I need to get that message, right? Um, so I have the ID parts are going to be ID split on the vertical pipe. Where's vertical pipe? I'm looking at my keyboard and I don't know where the keys are. Oh my gosh. It's so close and so wrong. But I'm going to take it anyway. Um, so return, we don't have content. Um, it's not the hashtag. It's going to be the provider is the first part. The second part is the provider ID. The message, oh, it's so good. It's so good, but it's so wrong. And we need to await that because that is, yes. And I need to make it async. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. What don't we like about this? That's okay. It's, um, I think that was how I do this, right? Right, if I'm binding to the route parameter? Put that back on there. Let's go back to GitHub Copilot chat. How do I bind a property in a Razor page to a route parameter? Um, there we go. Bind property. I got it right. Okay. So in my message detail CSHTML message, I'm not going to bind it to the content. Well, I could. Let's bind it just to the text. Actions, we don't know what the actions are yet. It's already rebuilding here for me. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. Um, I'm going to grab, uh, let's grab this message right here. And it did nothing. And now I feel shame. And now I feel shame. Rebuild that. That was a razor page. It should know what that is. Come on now. No, still doesn't know what it is. All right. I shouldn't have had to have specified the layout on this, right? No. We're good there. Slash message details slash ID. Nah, it should pick it up automatically, Zerus. There's so Razor Pages defaults to the name and it'll wire up and put that in as a it, as the location that it's routing to. So because it's pages, it should pick up and go there automatically. The question is Did it get there and stop? Hello, 
friends. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just putting the thing on the stuff. Why don't you like that? Really? Really? Get out of converted to a read only span. How do I convert text to a read only span? Why aren't you listening to me when I talk to you? dot as spam. Yeah, that's what. And it wants it as bytes. How do I use response dot body dot write async with a string? Close. I need to get the bytes. All of that to just prove it doesn't work. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, Gunter, hello there. Average C sharp experience. Standard deviation JavaScript experience. Yes, that was voice activated, Tiger Plep. You are correct. Why? Because I don't like typing, and I like having our AI friends help out. Um, you should be starting. Oh, tartar sauce. Do, 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 do. Look at all those console hosts. That's a lot. Dare I say something isn't cleaning up properly. Yes, I know like looking under my unmade bed when you get to see what I have in my task manager. Um, you have a question. Is it worth it to focus on learning Blazor over a JavaScript framework? Depends. Um, what's the benefit? Microsoft is betting big on Blazor. Building with Blazor means that you can build not just web applications, but also native applications directly. You love you some con hosts. <laughs> I get it. I do. Uh, so now if I click that, it opens in a new screen, and I should have hit a breakpoint over here. We didn't hit a breakpoint over here because it didn't do get async. Why didn't it do get async? Um, Rebuild and apply. Do it! 
So here's my thinking about broadcasting to YouTube. I know some of you are watching on YouTube. I know some of you are not. But I know that YouTube is on everybody's television. That means you can lean back and watch on your television. The, this face right here. Um, that didn't get there either. Twitch is not on everybody's TV. They don't have apps for every everything. Um, I can forget how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. things into the headers don't care I want it on an ID why did it route me over here um, it does but it should pick up and use Tend to use YouTube is far less likely to buffer. Okay, that's interesting. Mm, moderation didn't get there. Show me. Forgot to add the route template. Uh, no, it's just ID. Uh, yeah, sure. Cool. I, I didn't want to put the the provider out separately you know what the heck was all that right so this yeah now we hit a break point is it this ID did it find it on this ID no so I don't need that one because I have it on this one and then I can continue through yeah okay come here you you're gone. Um, I don't need you. This can be that. Try that again. I was trying to re avoid the HTTP get. Um, yeah, I'm not on a, on a route helper. There we go. So I got the message. We can put up the actions over here and take some take some interactions on this. Nice. Um, all right, we're getting somewhere, right? Because it's still that one right there. Yeah. So now what? 
Um, sure. Leave it like that. Can I do this? No. No. I have over here. Format context with emotes. Yes. Who did? Um, that's funny. I have do not disturb turned on and you still disturbed me, Windows. I don't appreciate that. Go pound sand. Um, yes. So let's call this which I believe I exposed. Yep, there it is. So I can call that after the page is loaded. So let's go down here. Um, at section scripts. Right? Um, so put in a little bit of JavaScript. No. Window format content with emotes, but T gets returned. So I can say window tags app format content with emotes. And then I'm going to pass in the content, which is going to be Right. Document. You know what? Is that? Can I do it then? I don't think I can. I didn't think I could do that. Can I do that? Is that a thing? No. Um... Right, because format content with emotes returns the output of that, which is, yeah, that text as HTML. So we could say content L dot inner HTML equals. Inconceivable. Hey there, Landon. You see so many of your college classmates are getting certs in Java. Is there one I would recommend for C-Sharp? Yes, check out Free Code Camp has a certification in C-Sharp that you can get now. Yes, yes. Um, why, is, why is that undefined? Like... Show me what you got there. Undefined. Interesting. Um, what is it to get the inner text?
still undefined. I thought it was text content. Don't. No. No, not speech recognition. Eh? Yeah. So it passed that in to there. looking for the JavaScript object to go through. That's what's going on, because it'll pick up the emotes also. Crumbs. Okay. This is fine. HTML and code. Actually, it does that automatically with that. We had the console log and it worked. Needs to get the emotes in there. Oof. Wait a sec. I'm overthinking this. Hey there, uh, is that Hemgard? Welcome.
HTML dot raw. No. That sure looks. Let's go back into the console. There's a console down here, isn't there? No. Um, yeah. Doesn't have the lowercase. I don't want type info. I want some of them options. Give me some of them options. Options. New JSON serializer options doing the things to format the stuff. That's not it. Now we've completely confused it. There we go. Property naming policy. Cha ching. Now it works. Now it works. Developers, developers, nice. developers, 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 developers. Right. Developers. Uh, thank you so much for the follow. 9899 ISO. That sounds like a standard to me. How you doing there, friend? Thanks so much for joining us and clicking that follow button. All right, so now I have a way to format the message, and I'm going to get the emotes popping out there also. So let's go find a message in moderation that somebody used emotes with, like this one from Stelzy. And it does give me the emotes properly in the message. <laughs> okay. Um, next. Wow, it's one o'clock. We've been having fun, haven't we? Um, I need to put put the header information about who who gave us this wonderful message? Um, so let's do this. Um, well, there's a card body. Do you think? Uh, I think we can get Copilot to help out with this a little bit. Add a card head with the um, with the message author information. I'm not even going to look at it. Disable hut reload. Turn that off. Restart and run it over here. Let's see what it looks like. Seriously, like, come on, Copilot. Creator doesn't contain a definition for avatar URL. No, but you know what it does contain? You know what it does contain? Get her done. Get her done. All right. For some reason, you went over there. We're going to bring you back over here with the rest of us. Um. Okay. We're getting there. How did I get... 
two of those. Oh, they are there. Um, I don't like that it wrapped and we can't. It's over here. Um, I think we got an extra. No. It put a row inside the card header. Yeah. That's better. All right. Now we're talking. Um, there is a handler on the actual card to put the default picture in there. Um, there it is. So let's make sure we include that. Cool. Um, now we need to start adding some actions. So to exactly the point that we had earlier, I can now click into one of these. I get the message over here and I can start filling out messages, interactions that we do over here on this message. Nice. But if it's a message that we've previously rejected and I come through and say more on this, I should probably indicate somewhere here that this message was rejected and why and that information. Itchy. I've been wearing this hat for a while. Um, oh man, this is so good. This is so good. Seriously, friends, I really enjoy what we've accomplished here so far. Let's get rid of the, the header text message there. We don't need that. We know it's the message. That's better. But I think we need a rejected indicator in here. You know? Um, do we have that information? Um, we might, we might, right? No, we don't, because we have the message, right? Uh, no, I want, I want the console there, friend. Yeah, we don't have, if it's been rejected. Um, so that returns a content element. Yeah, that doesn't have the moderation information. Yeah, I need to get I need to get the information about whether it was rejected or not and how it was rejected, that stuff. Right? Because if you're digging into the message details, now I really want to show you more about it. Um I can. I used a class previously to do that. But I can. Um <clears throat> It's a moderation content model that comes back. Uh, 
So that's getting for a specific tag. Here's the moderation information coming out with it also. Um, there, Spartacus. 1207, welcome. So we have a get all content, get approved content, rejected content, moderate. And right now we're reaching into the service and saying this. So let's reach over here. Get content with moderation. No. The Ender Star Wars hat. Oh, that's not it. Give me a minute or two. I'll grab it, Nalian. Um... Is it moderation action or moderation state? It's moderation action. Um, string provider, string provider ID. We need to add that capability, thank you. And we're also gonna no, this is the only one that's implemented. Get the content item requested and include the Come on, you can figure this out, copilot. New. Uh -huh. Yup. But, and it's a big but. Um, content should have moderation actions associated with it. Right? Isn't there a, a navigation element from here to there? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So oh, good. Um, so what I should be able to do. Come on, cast it for me. Uh, 
No. Um, can I do content? Can I do it like this? Um. Exception unable to find content with that ID. Okay. So now I should be able to say moderation action item. Why don't you like that? dot uh, moderation action is null then it's uh, null otherwise this is going to be a moderation action so now oh, back over here instead of get content by IDs Oh no, what did I do? I've gone too far. Moderation repository. Get content with moderation. Yeah, provider, provider ID. And message now becomes content, content. Right? So now, go back over here. Uh, oops. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that! Yeah. You restart. Let's start here with Grogu in the meantime. I know I have the indoor Star Wars hat here. I will get into that. Still works. Good. Now I want to test and see, was it rejected, and paint that appropriately on screen. Oh, man. Um, in the card header. Go ahead. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. It got it right. Um, we're going to say model message. No, not content. Action. Mm. So we need to put a doodad on there. No. So if that state is a moderation state rejected, right? We want to output a uh, reject. Let's start with that. Got it. Um, so we also want to put a test if it's approved.
then um, approved. Okay. So if it's rejected, we should put our appropriate colors and things on there if it's rejected. So let's go find that. Mm-hmm. So I will do... No, let's put an ID on this one. Didn't pick it up. And now I feel shame. Oh, there it is. If, well, we need a big old, there we go. Uh, if model message action Content. No. Action. State. To string. No. No, I said text. I meant text. And we can put the reason after that. Model, message, action. And now I feel shame. Uh, let's go find a message that was rejected for a reason. So let's put a check on that. Um, I like that. Okay, tell me more. That, that's kind of an else. Either way, no, that's... Right, I can, I can kind of do that, right? Close. 
if uh, my string is null or empty, Not bad. Not bad. Um, we should probably look up that user and turn that back into a display name. I'm not going to get wrapped up in that right now. We'll take that as an item for later. Blocked user. Okay. Now I can add the actions, right? I can put over here block user as a action to take. How you doing, chat room? It has been a long stream. Going on almost five hours. But I feel really good about this. But I also need some lunch. You know what I'm saying? Beer time. <laughs> Whiskey time. Uh, no. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to take a quick break. Go get myself some lunch. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try the eating while streaming. Let's see if we can add <clears throat> at least our first action here. Block user. And it automatically blocked the user for all time. <clears throat> Let's do that. I'll also find that that Star Wars hat. It, I'm seriously, I'm having a lot of fun coding with you today. Now, I hope you are too. Um, taking a peek over here at the discords. Yeah, things are things are going all right out there. Let's let's do that. Here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to trigger two minutes of advertising. Um, and I'm going to go... I'm going to turn off my camera. I'm going to turn off the microphone. I'm going to go grab some lunch from downstairs. And we'll be right back. We'll continue uh, writing a little bit of code here as we finish adding blocked user capabilities to Tag Zap. <clears throat> when we finish this, we're going to go and revisit configuration so we can try and simplify the startup configuration interactions here because there's pieces missing there. After that, we're not gonna get there to, on today's stream. I think logging and statistics collection using the new features of .NET 8 and routing that content over to Prometheus are on the agenda. So to the question, the points that some folks were saying about how much they enjoy Aspire, I want to give you as a developer the ability to have that rich console 
and be able to see what's going on and hand off to your users. Here's what's happening inside of TagZap. Because right now, TagZap is, re is, is not in intended for typical non-developer to use. We get on the other side of this moderation feature and we can start peeling back some of those layers and simplifying configuration and startup so that anybody can get it running. And that's important to me. So let's do that. I'm gonna kick off a couple of, a couple of minutes of advertising. I'm gonna grab some lunch. I'll be right back. And uh, we'll write some more code in a little bit. All right. See you in just a few minutes. Where's that button? There it is, camera front. I think it's this one, right? Steel to 79 just resubscribed for 54 months. Phil Vessi cheered 100 bits for the break.
All right, I think we're about ready to get back into this. Uh, I have a camera here, don't I? Hi. Phil with the cheer, thank you so much for the for that. Stelzy with the prime sub. Appreciate it. You didn't see the ad? Uh, that's funny. It says they ran the ad, and we've got 35 minutes of disabled pre-roll. So. Uh, let's see. I got myself a ham and Swiss on gluten-free bread. What are we thinking? And, and I got your hat there. There you go. Look at that, Nalian, right? Uh I even put mayo on it and it's still dry. Ugh. Mm. I've suddenly got pain in my jaw. Um, hey YouTube. How far behind are you? Wow, that's really far behind. All right. Hmm. <sighs> Where to next? Don't need to look at that. Just catching up on anything that I might have missed over here. Before we get too much further. Um, no. No. Yes, that would that was Outlook. I opened Outlook. Nope. Okay. Um <laughs> Was I supposed to do a thing? Did I miss a thing? I think I might have missed a thing. Yeah, I think I missed a thing. This is an open source repository. I can bring this up on stream. Um, yeah, we could talk about this. Thanks, Robert. Um, let me bring this up. Uh, let's, we can, we can talk about this briefly because I think there's some interesting feedback to discuss here. Um, this is, this is the, uh, chaos community. <clears throat> they are trying to promote a little bit of badging and, and, um, information about, events that are inclusive and 
and encourage folks to participate. We submitted .NET Conf for this a little more than two weeks ago. And there's some questions about event demographics, if it's an inclusive experience, time inclusion, and as you know, .NET Conf is completely online. You're not requiring, you're not required to buy a ticket to submit any information at all. Your privacy, your information about participating is yours. You don't have to do a thing. So we, we submitted and answered all of their questions about the event. In, in the, including there's questions here. Well, do you have diversity access tickets? Do you provide tickets for folks that are, um, that, that doing, that are, of, of lower means and might not be able to participate. Well, we wrote our event does not require part to tickets to participate and all are free to enjoy. And after reviewing here, it'd be great if there was a clear way to measure event demographics. No. I don't want to measure event demographics. That's a violation of your privacy. An opt-out and text input option for attendees. Attendees don't have to participate. The code of conduct on the website where one can easily find it. Oops, spelled it wrong. right there in the footer there it is it's kind of hiding behind me here there it is code of conduct and it goes right there so um, I'm going to respectfully reply here Some thoughts. Um, we do not collect demographic information because this would create a potential violation of uh, privacy laws like GDPR. All are welcome and we don't, and uh, we believe your, uh, and and we uh, we believe we do not need your uh, demographic information. Nah. to provide you with an event. Um, uh, why would a user need to opt out? There is no demographic information collected. The code of conduct is clearly visible in the footer and links to a local copy. Right, and that That is uh, on the website at, uh, oops, wrong one, that one. Uh, 
uh, that provide you with an event that all will enjoy. There we go. So. There's little things that we try to do to make sure that that folks uh, um Yep, the point isn't to say who said what, but what was said. Yep. So, you can key in information, and you can key in whatever name you want. Yep, we got to avoid CCPA also. At which point, then, there's a demographics and collection information that becomes less inclusive. Because now I have to say, you must be 13 in order to watch this in some parts of the world. So, everybody's welcome. Nobody's required to, to purchase a ticket. Nobody's required to share any information they don't want to. Done. Like, if not requiring privacy information, not requiring demographic information from folks, and therefore making it available to everyone regardless of your background, your location, If that is not inclusive, then I, I need some help understanding their definition of inclusive. So, um, develop your way with your tools. Absolutely. So, we'll see what they say. Um, I'm I'm up for the discussion and and encouraging folks, but there's in my mind there's limits as to what folks are trying to accomplish and do. Um, one second here. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, how you doing there, chat room? Um, hmm. Interesting. Let's get back into this, shall we? Yeah, there we go. Not bad, Eric. Not bad. So, we started on this message detail screen so we can add things like block user here. So that we have this, right, we have this advanced operation from moderation. That you can drop into and do more things and take appropriate additional actions. So let's start adding some of that. What do you say? Developers, developers, that? Developers, developers, How you doing there, Ravello6? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So message details, so next to the message in this actions block, right? 
think we're going to have a uh, unordered list here of buttons that we're going to let folks press. Jean Valjean, hello. Coder24601, good to see you. Don't mind me, I'm enjoying my lunch. Mm. Mm -mm. Add a block user button. No. No. Um, let's add this as a, is it a hyperlink or is it a button? It's got to be a button because we want to do a post back. But we're not inside a form. So we should probably make this form method post. All right. Block user. Uh, let's see, model content. Oh, come on, model message content. Uh, rats. Author display name. It's weird as a button like that. Hey, Schmikey, hello to you in Berlin. Guten Nachmittag. Actually, Guten Abend. Hello, hello. Um, and I also want to get rid of the, uh, the bullet there, but... Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not a bad start. So we'll have a post back with that name and... Yeah. Task uh, on post async. And it's going to be message details. ID, string ID, and we're also going to be receiving right, it's going to post block user. It's going well, thank you. Um... Yeah, it's using Bootstrap. Yep. Easy to use, nicely formatted. No arguments there, really. Um, yeah, so if block user is not... So I'll be receiving that value. Right? So if we have a user and an element that we're blocking, then we want to get that information. You like Tailwind? Okay. To each their own. That's okay. Uh, let's go get the message. Right? 
Um, oh, we need to get the provider. And I'm going to call on the moderation repository. I also need to know who this user is, which means I need the user manager. Right? Tags app user. Look at that, use a primary constructor. User manager, get user. Put a big ol' of weight on that. So I have the user that's doing this. So now I can say moderation repository. Actually, I'm not moderating, I'm blocking. So I need the The ID of the user to block is coming out of this message content author username. This message content provider. The moderator who's blocking the user is this user. And this is going to be date, time. And that should block the user. What kind of SDK error are you having there, not Ralph? Uh, uh, multiple constructors. What? Where do you see multiple constructors? There's only one there. There's only one. Where do you see multiple constructors? Rebuild that. There it is. So now if I want to say block Johan, Direct page. Um, ID equals ID. Don't you like that? Yes, they do. Uh, fine. You don't like that. Strange things. Right? 
it. There it is. Block. Now, it doesn't show me anything, but if I go over to blocked users, mm, that didn't save either. Okay. Wire up the debugger. Here we go. Let's take a look-see. Um, Microsoft Net SDK web specified and not found RC2. You sure? Oh, it's not going to run once again. Because it's uh, sitting in watch mode. Here we go. So grabbing one of these, ID, we have a value, block user, we have a value. We have a message. It doesn't have a moderation actually on it yet, but that's okay. We have the user, that's me. We're gonna call block user. Yep, the blocking user's me. Yep. Oh, the expiration date. It's expiration date that's being passed in. Anyone. We're passing the wrong date. That's why. So it's being saved. It's just the date is... Right. New daytime offset. New daytime. There was something about that that we needed to address. Right. It was over here. Oh, comma time span zero. Because it's so far out in the future, who cares? And if we go to blocked users, there we go. So it's blocking. That blocked by, we should change into the display name that's being passed through. That's better. Really? It's not removing it? You're, you're kidding, right? Oh, yeah. Why not? Um, so unblock is not working. Um. 
Whoa. Okay, fine. That's better. Cool. Right, so we can go into a message. Mm, look at this Damien Bowden guy. Take a look. Yeah, look at that message. Oh, I don't like that stuff. Block him. There we go. We should probably indicate some information about success. Right? Mm -hmm. There's the message. Actions, there we go. Uh -huh. Data. Hello. Glenn just Glenn! For Oh my gosh. Months. Hello, hello. How are you, my friend? Success is successfully. No, successfully. Blocked user. How's it going there, sir? Great to see you. That's our friend Glenn Condren. Hello, hello. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. Let's see, that should look nicely now. There you go. 57 years! <laughs> uh, I've got an extra parenthesis there. We should get rid of that. I'm not going to lie. I need to get rid of that. How are you doing, my friend? It's great to see you. We had an awesome time producing, presenting .NET Conf last week. Didn't get too much, of, too much of a chance to hang with you, um, but it, it sounded like you and your team were very happy with how things went. Um, so, gotta like that. It didn't. Did it? Did it not? Hang on. Go back over here. Current blocked users. Unblock. Back over here, block. That's better. There we go. Aspire was a big hit. I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I, Glenn, if you haven't seen, check your email. There's a uh, there's a re we've sent the report about the event. Most watched .NET Conf of all time. Most downloads of .NET during .NET Conf of all time. Most over the weekend views of the on demand content from .NET Conf of all time. It was pretty successful. And we gotta like that. <laughs> um there's isn't is there a way to init cap something? We have two uppercase, two lowercase, but is there a two init cap? Uh yeah. So here's what I want you to do. If you want to learn about Aspire, Johan uh, Glenn and David Fowler did it a great talk in day one. It's maybe the third or fourth talk down in the playlist when you go to the .NET uh, YouTube channel. Look up the playlist for .NET Conf 2023. It's like the fourth or fifth talk. You, you did see that one live. Okay. I was going to say developers, great developers, content in there that'll get folks pointed in the right direction. Hey, NB, Matt, thank you for the follow. All right, so I have block user capability built into here but i i, I would like the developer, init cap developer, on that developer, uh developer, hey developer, thornbean developer. thornbean tom bean okay thank you for the follow 
to a knit cap. Humanizer has it. Does it? Do I have Humanizer in here? I might. I might. Um, <laughs> let me see. I do. Um, no. Uh, do I? I need to put a using statement on this to get them, don't I? To get the extension methods. To. Uh, um, what do we got here? Humanizer. Letter casing. Uh, check matey. Hello. Check matey just resubscribed for eleven months. Um, there's a problem with Copilot. Thank you so much, and I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society, like we do for all of our subscriptions and cheers. Uh, much appreciate. Is this going to be a library framework? No. This is an application we're building and learning about ASP.NET Core, C Sharp, .NET 8, and uh, eventually we're going to put it, we're going to put this into Aspire, we're going to put this into Blazor, we're going to make some client side applications to go with this. There's a lot coming from this, but we're right at the beginning where we're setting this up so that streamers can collect messages from a bunch of different platforms and uh, interact with them all at once. Let me show you in a second here. Uh, use humanizer, humanizer, to format this string with word case. Come on now. Come on now, co-pilot. Yeah. Um, dot humanize. Well, I, I, I really don't like that. You could have done this like in line over here. Uh, humanize. Yeah. What are my options? I don't have options. Letter casing. Yeah. Um, title? How does that look? Still, no. And now I feel bad. Um, uh, what else do we have in here that we can do? No. Title didn't work. Sentence? Sentence? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, so title didn't work. No. That's not working either. That's not running. Let's start there. Or, no wait, it's in debug mode over here, so it's not hot reloading. Yep, Copilot in Visual Studio, yes. What font do I use in, uh, in Visual Studio? Standby. I have a command for that. That's not the command, because I can't type. There you go. I'm using Cascadia code, and it's, I like it. I, I like it. I do. Get rid of those. Go back over here. So if we try that, see, it's it's not formatting. That's not doing anything. Provider's a string, and it's not taking that title casing on that either. Have I tried debugging C Sharp and NeoVim? No. Really? 
Um, NeoVim it doesn't have a debugger for C Sharp. Why? If you want to use a debugger, you're looking at Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio or a third party provider that has their own debugger. Um, your choice. But there is formatting and type ahead completion in Vim for C Sharp. So, um, yeah, why doesn't that work? Like, Right, I'll, I'll turn the debugger back on. Right, and let's... Let's look at that. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, I forgot to stop the application again. Uh, it's not here. Why isn't it here? Where'd it go? It's not here. I don't get it. It must be there because it's what's holding things up. There it is. Try that again, debug through it. Just add log statements everywhere. You can do that. If spaghetti is basically bread, can we eat it with Nutella? Can and should, I think, are two different words here that we need to use carefully. All right, here we go. So... Right. This message content provider is humanize. Right? And it still comes back the same. Well, I'm glad that worked. I hope that worked. Hello, hello, one lion. Hey there, friend. Welcome. Um, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Do I have to go all lowercase and then humanize it? How are things, one lion? Thank you so much. Um... Do we, do we have to do this? There it works. That's weird. Thank you so much, uh, One Lion. Welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a live coder. I write code live on Twitch, teaching, sharing about all the cool things that are going on with .NET as we build different applications and, and have fun together. What were you doing over there on your channel, One Lion? I have a pretty good idea what you were doing, but uh, let us know in the chat. Appreciate it. Appreciate you sending over your friends to join us here. Thank you so much. I've been streaming a little bit longer today because I've been having some fun um, writing code and, and doing the fun things together. Uh, one second here. Um, Fig Jam brainstorming action, uh, session going to start the actual UI redesign for the stream project, the Blazor Financial Management Tracker application. That's pretty cool. Not going to lie, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go find a message here and uh, let's see, I don't know. Uh, here, let's grab this one from An Angel Munez. And there's the message block on Mastodon. Looks good. Um, all right. Yeah, redesign sessions, not the actual implementation yet. 
Nice. Okay. Um, was waiting for for make sure that works. So now we have a block button that you can get into from moderation here. Now it, it still looks kind of bad. Unblock option on the page where you block. Uh, so if it's rejected because of a blocked user, funny it doesn't say that there. Um, if there w <sighs> well, okay, it's not showing blocked user on these, it is there to add an unblocked user. Not going to go there yet. I'm going to re remove this dot and I'm going to turn this into. Now nah, I'm okay with it looking like a button for now. But let's get rid of that. Um. So let's go back over to my CSS. Uh, message detail screen. So it's message details UI. Dot actions. Um, uh, what's, what is it for the bullet? Right, the uh, list style. Yeah, none. That should be margin left. Why aren't you reloading? Eh. Eh. Uh, yeah, list, list style. Where's it on the UL? Yeah, it's on the UL, huh? Still didn't move it over. Hey there. Uh, thank you for the follow. It's padding. Is that... Ah, there we go. Fantastic. Code rush with the raid. Oh, how did I miss that? Hello, hello, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going a little bit longer today. Not going to lie. Um... Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I don't know why the rating, rating alert didn't go off. Maybe because it was less than five. So, um, cool. That works for me. It's, I'd really like it to be something, I don't know. Do we say block J Fritz and go or execute? Um, this is uh, stream beats. Um, you'll see the 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 what's it called? It's the song names appear just above me there as new songs start, and it should be popping up in a second here. I don't see it showing up. 
Where is it? It should be up there. It's not on. There it is. It, there you go. This song's called Alter Ego from Stream Beats. Uh, you're a Swift UI developer. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying and uh, always happy to um, talk through and share stuff here. Um, uh, right, my, my other option here being... Right, something like this. Uh, no, you're you're on the right path there. Content provider to lower invariant humanize right. Uh, come on now. Letter casing title. Right? Something like that. Oh, Keith. <laughs> Do Swift UI developers call themselves Swifties? So, and then that should still work. Right? And there's the block. Um, what do you think? Too much. Go still feels feels weird also. I don't know. Too much. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave that the way it is for now. Um, let's commit this and call that a day, right? Um, completed, um, message actions screen for block user. There we go. Do I have all the other messages stored or only for the purposes of displaying? Yes, I do have them all stored. Yes. Uh, when you look at that view, you can display older messages below to allow moderators to get a feel for them. Interesting. Put it behind a toggle button. Interesting. Um, I would need to add methods to be able to do that. It is a Twitch mod feature, you're right. Hmm... Let me gnaw on this one. Hmm. Hmm.
as an ex as an option to go load and get more data. Sure. A button to load past messages? Sure. Let's take that as a... Let's take that as an additional feature and leave that open. What the heck? Is... No. Um... <laughs> Let's go back over here. From the message detail screen, um, allow moderators to load older messages. Um, for the user whose message is being reviewed, um, add a button that loads recent historical messages by that user for review. Um, yeah. Yeah, click that button, get recent five to ten messages. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But I want to leave it out there so if somebody's interested and wants to build that, they can. So. One second here. There we go. Am I self-taught? At... at my age, I'm self-taught about a lot of things. I didn't. I, I didn't learn .NET in school. I didn't learn Blazor in school. I, I taught myself it from the documentation that the team wrote and handed me. <laughs> so, did I learn C Sharp in school? No, I taught myself uh, taught myself that. Did I learn Visual Basic in school? Yes. There's an there 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 comes an age and a level of experience where you're going to be self-taught on some things, and and that term kind of goes away. Like I read the documentation and learned how to do these things. Yes, I turned around and built training materials for other folks. Yes, so um, where was I? There was something else. Not just the list of blocked users and making it appear. There was something else that was kind of necessary as I was just looking at this. And was like, oh, shoot, I forgot. No, not that. Um... crumbs <sighs> besides blocking users I want to let me get back to your question um Unblocking users we've got. I can't remember. There was something else that felt right to do with this at this time that I don't remember.
Not right now. But yes, but not right now. I have timeout as a as as part of the capabilities here. There's this blocked until, and right now I'm I'm not activating that. I'm just blocking everybody for all time. Hey, James Foreman, happy holiday to you. I can't remember. Um, let's put a title on that currently blocked users page. Right. Thank you. Blocked users, it's there. Um... You wonder about a really, really long message? You mean like that one? It's right there. Uh, Copilot is very smart. If I turn off Twitch and you see some of the other longer messages, right? They still fit together nicely. So. Yeah. Um, is there anything else I wanted to do while I was in here? Right? I think we're okay for now. I think we're okay for now. that way. Is the hover over? It touch and it pops open the hover menu. So. Um. Add a button to message, message details. I'm even going to tell you exactly where we want it. So, there we go. So, that should merge, make it available, and deploy. And we now have blocked user capabilities. So, let's take a look at the milestones that I had laid out here. 42% on milestone 4. This one's going to be tricky. When new content cards arrives, smoothly shift and load content. That's going to be hard. Configuration of the back of the modal window, I don't think is very hard. Um, this should be building and deploying. With an irregular sized window? It should. It.
It does. So, it handles it nicely. So, I feel good. I feel good about that. There, it's building the image to deploy. So, Copilot is really smart, yes. So, where was the question earlier about asking if I was self-taught? Uh, oh, Maxwell was asking about advice for somebody who's self-taught trying to get a job. Write code. Write as much code to do as many different interesting things as you can think of. Um, put it in a GitHub repository for things that you want to share, that you want other folks to see as you accomplish things so that if folks say, you know, well, what kind of things have you written? You can share some of that. Find an open source project that you like and contribute documentation or write some tests or write some code that's helpful for that so that you show up as a contributor on that project. So, and, and folks can smell if you did something, if you did something inadequate for a project. But if you can build and share content about, share, share content that, hey, I contributed to Project X by writing some documentation or writing tests or adding feature Z, fantastic. They can see examples of how you helped a team Right When you're trying to find that first job, being able to contribute and show what you're capable of in another project goes a long way. Hey there, Tom Bean. Hello. Um, oh, boy. We've done a lot. We're more than six hours into the stream. It does help to show some enthusiasm in the interviews. You're right, Johan. Yeah. Um, but what I find frustrating... Um, and, and... Here, I'll pivot over here. What I find frustrating... I have stretched, yes. And I, I have gotten beverages. Um... I've had folks that have asked to interview me for a position. I take interviews every now and again. And they ask me to take a coding test. At which point I say, I, I ask them, with respect, do you know why you're interviewing me? Yes, it's because you do these videos, you do these Twitch streams. I say, okay. You want me to take a coding test? Yes, we would. I think our interview is over here. Because if you're asking this guy to take a coding test, when literally there are thousands of hours of me coding live on the internet, on video, Choose one, crack it open, watch, which theoretically you have, because that's why you're interviewing me. We're not in the same page as to your goals, what I can deliver to you, and even knowing who I am and why you even brought me in to talk. Having, and, and even then, folks ask, well, can you show us some examples of what you've written? Here's my GitHub repository. Go take a look. No, no, we'd like to see actual code of yours. Like, there, some folks don't get it. And, and certainly I'm at a position as an influencer, as as somebody in the industry that I can, I can flex a little bit like that. I can. And if... If folks don't want to discuss with me, they're not at the same level as me, and I can step away from them comfortably. 
for folks that are just starting, you need to have those assets to show. I've been doing this for 25 years. That's a lot of time. Damn, I'm old. You need to build that base. Tom Bean said, asks, should I try to build a web portfolio or should I take a certificate on Coursera and add them to my CV? Um, it depends on what type of what type of job you want. If you want a job at a startup, build a website. If you want a job at a big enterprise, get a certificate. They see the two the the, the two groups perceive those credentials differently. So full, yes, a full stack job, okay. At what type of organization? Do you want to build the next web application that's going to do so many wonderful things? Do you want to build a, a website that helps to recruit people for, uh, for medical studies? That build a website that handles folks' stock portfolio? They're different. Right? They're different organizations. There's different mindsets to those organizations. When you take a look at some of the job requirements, the larger enterprises will say things like nice to have certification X, Y, and Z. Right? Smaller companies want to see what you can do. They want to see that portfolio. Having both is really good. You want to know about my headset, the Dude Bowls? Uh, this is a this is an Audio Technica uh, BP One. Mm -hmm. They don't make it anymore. BPHS one. Um, that's why I didn't find it. Yeah, that's not exactly no 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 this one, right? Hey, how you doing there? Uh, caffeinate bot. Ooh, okay. Tell me more. Here, I'll show you. There you go. That's the headset that I have. So, there are newer models of it. So. Are we wrapping up? I don't know. Maybe. What do you have in mind? Another Blazor developer? Who, like who? Um, oh, I don't have... No, I don't have the USB one. Hang on. No. Mine's not the USB one. Interesting. No, I have the analog one. And I don't see it here anymore. Yeah, mine's the analog one. You can drop their name, I don't mind. Did I? Mm, nah, that's that's not quite close enough. Uh, Set Olex. Never heard of him.
but happy to encourage more folks that are coding with .NET and Blazor on Twitch. Awesome. That's great stuff. Not going to lie. Always happy to see more folks. Um, continuing on. Um, you know what? Yeah, it, it is after 3 o'clock. I'm happy to pause now. Yeah. That, so the microphone off of this is a is a uh, XLR. This is an XLR connected microphone, and it is a quarter inch headset connection. So um, for the audio out, yeah. Let's let's wrap it up here. Move on to, and I'm gonna move on to some other things in my day. Um, yeah, we've done a lot. Not gonna lie. We got we talked about a whole bunch of things to start the stream and then we dug into Tags app and we built a block user feature that adds a moderation entry for Tags app that that allows you to block a user based on what platform they're operating on. Hey, let's block C sharp Fritz on on Twitter. We don't want to see messages from him coming through. Let's automatically reject those messages. Done. There's so many more things that we can do with that. We can say just mute this person for a certain amount of time. We can we can get in there and start saying, well, mute these terms. I don't want to see these terms come through on my messages and add more on that. Lots more capabilities that we can do there. But before I go further down the moderation capabilities, I want to back up to configuration and, and let's get get things so that developers can configure and work on the application without needing to have the all of the login configuration capabilities, without needing to have um, um, wired up providers from the get-go, a Postgres uh, uh, container sitting there waiting for them. Let's see if we can make the on-ramp for developers and consequently users a little bit easier. And that's where we're gonna go. Make that out of the box experience. That's a great way to describe it, Johan for both developers and users of this a heck of a lot easier to go through. Jedi Mega Man here asks, do the big earmuffs ever cause my glasses to dig into the side of my head after prolonged use? No, these are very, very soft uh, muffs here on these. Um, I, I do also have, not for these glasses, but for other glasses, I actually have a, um, a, a, a string, a tether that goes to the front that will wrap around so there's no compression at all on the side of your head. So I don't feel it at, at all after a long day. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Let me see who else is streaming on the big Twitch TV network that I can get you connected to do that's ho hopefully doing something fun, something interesting. Um, taking a look around the horn here, I think I wanna send you, I think I wanna send you to a friend who's doing something fun, who needs a little bit of a boost. Who needs a little bit of a boost? Can can we go in? Can we raid and say hello to our friend of ours on Twitch? Can we visit with Countess Lita? She's a friend. So let me put the raid call out here if you're on Twitch. And she's playing Super Mario RPG. Yeah, this will be fun. Let's drop in and say hello to her. She is a VTuber, but I think you'll have fun um, visiting with her. Say hello. It's yeah, it's the remake. You got it, Jedi Mega Man. Say hello, and uh, uh, let's let's encourage her uh, on her stream today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. If you're in the states, if you're American, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving on Thursday. Um, I'm gonna be back on Friday and we're gonna do we're gonna do a partner not partner we're gonna do a stream anniversary stream stream anniversary stream an anniversary celebration stream because six years ago I started streaming on this channel get ready to say hi to my friend Countess Lita and until Friday I wish you good health and good coding take care <laughs>